Can you I see, sh- like, who's online? You will, I yeah. Mean, Let I me know saw... It. Like, viewers waiting zero, does it mean that there's no one and it's just us talking to ourselves? Pretty much. All right, back yeah. at it. Actually, First our second trip facts. out to New Hampshire. We've got a bing, bunch bing, of finesse stuff. We're probably going to be cast about a thousand times to try and figure out what they want. I didn't know that I had to be at work at 9.45 today. So I was there at the normal time. What's the normal time? I'm here at Volvo to find out. What? <laughs> I mean, not that late. <laughs> so I was there for like an hour and a half. Just like, well, whatever. An hour. Not doing anything. Post. We got one person on. What's up, Jack? Hey, Jack. Libido? Libido? How do you say that? Libido? Jack Libido. Oh, Jack Libido. Okay. Libido. Ask him uh, how the old volume balance is between everything and the board. How's the volume? I can't see <laughs> what anybody's saying. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, this is a delay, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's short, though. I mean, you're, what you see in the chat should be damn near live. Rich can, yeah. Sounds like yes. Yes, yes, they can hear us. Well, they, so, is the mic to music balance good? Did you hear that? Is the mic to music, music balance. balance good? God, that was a mouthful. <laughs> no. Is the music too loud? <laughs> Ugh. Hey Sean, you got an average watch time of 21 seconds. All right. Well done. Music's a bit loud. Music's a bit loud. I can fix that. All right. All right. That should be better. Okay. Yeah. Tell him. Ask him what the how that is now. Is that better? Richard. Richard. Dick? Yes. <laughs> that better dick? And he dropped up. <laughs> yeah, that <a> better dick. <laughs> yep, there he goes. Rude. <laughs> what did you say? He you said, you said you're good. good. Alright, All right, good. <clears throat> Mint. Eventually, it's what we're This do. is the second week we've been on time. Damn it. What? Filthy Angers is live now. Jim, you, I'm going to text him and be like, Oi, you're not supposed to go live till 9. Oh, it's okay. Hit it for the main. Hit it for the main. Well, you hurt yourself go. this time. So what about, the? I, <clears throat> I always do. Every week, every day. How else are you guys going to drink? You need to be able to do something to enforce you guys. Filthy, hang on. I'm going to, I'm going to harass Jim. All right. As usual. <laughs> Holy shit, that's loud. We're going to wait for people to uh, show up. Yeah, we usually go, like, properly live about five minutes after. The way screws me up. Yeah, it's really good, good to go. Jeez, you're still looking. Yeah. It's off by, <laughs> like, ten seconds, roughly, I think, on this end. On their end, it's a little bit longer. <clears throat> What's up, Brian? <laughs> oh, shit. Why is that making noise and stuff? Go away. All right, that's all good. That's good. El Telefono is there. Who we got here? We got Richard and Jack and David and Brian. Hey, buddy. How you been? Didn't he do really good recently? <clears throat> you guys need to tell me how the fishing has been. I haven't gone fishing since last week, so. Yeah. Well, according to how I've done, very bad. <laughs> well, according to how some other people have done, pretty good. Mm. <laughs> Hit or miss. That's how she goes. Hit or miss. <laughs> <laughs> Go to, what's up, buddy? And Gordy, how Ooh. you doing? Chris, Talon, Talon's back. Holy crap! Second week in a row. Thanks, buddy. Talon. Talon. <laughs> Fishing shit right now. Fish yeah. slower. Fish. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm a little nervous about with where I'm going tomorrow is like I'm chasing that really cold water, but it's slow. Up there, it should be fine. Just like last year. Yep. Should Just be. think of me on the on your shoulder. Don't slow. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Put it down. <laughs> Hey Lisa! Hey Ben! Ta- how'd you do today, Talon? We're gonna talk all sorts of stuff. We got all the goodies tonight for all the jerk baits and all the jigs. And again, let us know if we're like really quiet. The mic's yeah, I'm gonna leave it for now. It's a little far away, but it should be set up right that 
everybody's volume should be good no matter who's talking. Although I tend to talk about twice what he does. So And twice as loud. Well that's what I meant, but yeah, actually you're right on both points. <laughs> <laughs> nice! But Jack, what's your what are your water temps? Where you've been fishing? It's been like wildly inconsistent, but that's kind of how early spring fishing goes. It, At least the last few years it has been. Yeah, like it's wildly up and down. Like, dude, you literally just did that in the last two days. You went yep. and cracked a couple of giants and the next day got, what, two little ones? Perch. A perch. A perch. A perch. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I bet they're almost all still moving to schools. Oh, all right. Interesting talent. All right, it's 8.06. Close enough. We'll let other people roll in here as where's, the stream goes on. Where is he from? I don't remember where Talon's from. Talon, where are you from again? Remind us, please. Por favor. Um, still working on a bed. He's probably down there. Yeah, he must be down south, right? Gotta be. Yeah, he's got to be Carolinas. I was going to say Carolinas. Tennessee. Kansas. Hey, Paul. Kansas, Tennessee. How you been? Not even close. Somewhere around. <laughs> <laughs> Geography? Geology? Don't even... <laughs> oh, you know the joke. You got it in today. Where, where to go? In what? Last time we went 42 on this lake, but that was two, three weeks ago. Oh, wow. All right. Hey, John. Look basketball. Ooh, Peyton, what'd you get? Oh, he bought it. Oh, in, in like it arrived. Just got my basketball in today. I'm curious to see what he got. Mm. 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 Oh, there's actually... I need a starter. Oh, crap. <laughs> I forgot I want to grab a few more jerk baits. What kind of boat do you have? I don't even know. You don't even know? <laughs> Something old. It's a, it's a 90... Is it a 90? I think it's a 90 or 91 Allegro. Which is like, they don't even make them anymore. I've never heard of it. Exactly. Sounds like allergy they medicine. Make, <laughs> they, they make campers, apparently. Yeah. And it was one of those things where they just kind of like started making them. And then okay. I, I bought it for like a thousand bucks. Huh? Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. I want that one. This is new. Jerk bite. That one is very new. The old jerk bite. I told you the cutter's fire. Yep. Oh, God. Look at that. There's one. Look at oh. that one. So these are some more from Dragon Custom Tackle, and that's who I really wanted to talk about tonight, but. Here, let me do it. You guys can drink. Yeah, grab one of those, please. I'm going to get one more from over here. No, I don't drink anymore. Okay. I'm a pothead. <laughs> There's that one. Nah, just beer just messes my stomach up. There we go. Me too. I don't like drinking hard alcohol. All right, we got a few more from Dragon oh Custom. Oh, Atlanta. <laughs> drink. Check out that one. That one. I love because it's damn near perfect for smelt. I am not. At least as far as what I found pictures. How deep well, do these go? Four to six feet, depends. If you can get that out, cool. If not, don't worry about it. Um, Bass Track 185. Nice, Peyton. That's awesome. Hey, Shane. Bass Track. Jerk bait yesterday. A cutter is fire. Absolutely go to. Hey, Mike. How's your finger? I know you said it was stop bleeding, but it like really stop bleeding? Or are you just saying that? What do you do? Um, I'll let him explain, but. Uh, basically, pry bar slipped, and yep. thumb is not mm -hmm. intact anymore. Jesus. Uh, yes, Mike. That's actually what we were just digging out. Thank you, sirs. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get started. We, uh... Uh, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about jerk baits and jigs. Jigs and jerk baits. These are two things that, if you're not throwing right now, you're probably missing out. It's not the only thing. Oh, ooh, that's right. Hang on, before we get going. What's everybody drinking the tonight? Von Trapp Pilsner. Have you, you've been to the Von Trapp I have place, been to the right? Von Trapp. That's a cool spot. Where is that? It's a cool spot. It's in Vermont. It's in, uh... Stowe. Oh, Stowe? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, no. um, the... the <laughs> you, can <laughs> <laughs> you can read! You can read! The, uh, Ben and Terry's ice cream facility is, like, right down the road from Right near there, yeah. Oh, right really? near, it's right near there, right near, uh, Alchemist. Yep, Alchemist, right there. Alchemist, Alchemist, whatever. Get some heavy um, topper. Yeah. You're drinking friggin' iced tea. Peace tea, baby. I am trying to get <laughs> my drink out of my swim bait scrutiny koozie. One of those stupid canteen black cherry soda vodka things. These things are amazing. <clears throat> Tastes delicious, doesn't mess up my stomach, so it's win win. Sound of music. That's so, correct. Exactly. That's <laughs> correct. What is that? Careers could be better, basically, it's been drunk the since that. <laughs> it's good to know, music. Mike. Oh, really? That's what the yeah. Movie's based on. Huh. Not the brewery. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
just singing. They're just in there. Just doing, you're like, oh! <laughs> All right. We're going to go over everything Jigs and jerk baits for the evening. But before we get into it, we're going to talk about the... We'll start the stream like we have the last few weeks. Uh, fish report from the last few fishing trips. I'm going to go first because mine's really quick and easy. I've been skunked the last three times I've been out now. So for a total of four times this year, I've been skunked. However, the last trip, I absolutely anticipated getting skunked because we went out from 7 to about 10 o'clock two nights ago. It was cold. The water was about 46 to 48 and we i literally brought nothing but big baits that's kind of a lie i brought a jerk bait but it was in my rod locker i never took it out and we were literally going out there for that one big bite but we were early um it was the same spot that we did really well with that last year but the water's like three or four degrees behind where it really needs to be for that to go off so maybe next week it could be really good which is good because i'm off next week because i got a new job <laughs> Um, I've left my other job. I'm off for the rest of this week, all next week, and I start my new job uh, on the 19th. So I've taken some time for myself so I can relax and get a little more fishing in. Uh, but otherwise, just good mental reset and move on. Um, Andrew, you didn't fish at all since we last had the stream, right? Well, that one day. That one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it started snowing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was that was the stream, the last stream. Was it? Yeah, that was the last time you went out. You went out for like an hour or two before the stream. Or an hour or two before the stream, and you were like, yeah, I was out there for 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I haven't been fishing since then. <laughs> uh, but Dennis, on the other hand, go ahead. You can elaborate on the, your recent fishing report. You yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, I've caught a few. So, the this week, uh, so I've been out twice this week, and... One day, day before yesterday, I caught either four or five. I've been just going after work uh, to a local pond. So water at the pond is about 47 or was about 47 two days ago. Um, I got about four or five on a jerk bait. I actually got a 5.07 pound largemouth, not largemouth, smallmouth yeah. on a jerk bait in a pond that's mostly largemouth. So it was surprising to get a smallmouth that big. Got a few other decent smallmouth. Uh, we had a really warm day the next day, went back thinking that I'd crack them based on what happened the previous day, and I got a perch on my first cast, and then just nothing, and it just, the, the wind was in the opposite direction. Um, I was telling Andrew before we started that kind of the, I'm not super, super familiar with this lake, so I didn't want to stay out there past dark and hit a stump or something like that, so yeah. I basically... Once, once it started getting dark, I just left, and I only really had enough time to make my rounds through the spots once with a jerk bait and really have a chance to adjust or anything, slow down. But So how many times have you been to this spot? <sighs> Four. This huh. was my fourth. I'm a little salty. <clears throat> this is a spot that my da the very first place my dad took me to when I was eight years old in October of 1993 when we first moved to New Hampshire, and I've been fishing it. Not so much the last couple of years, but I, I've, no joke, I've probably fished it 400 times or more. That's my life. I never once caught more. I never once even She's broke into a four pound me. smallmouth. And he's there the third time. He catches a five. Jerk. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> it's random. It's random. Uh, yeah, that's Brady, crazy. you're a champ. I'm watching the math class right now. Uh, thank you, Ferris. And no. Thank you, Brian. And thank, thank you, Gary. Ferris. What's up? Fer and hello, Mrs. Hart. How are you? <sighs> we would be kind gentlemen while you were tuning in. <laughs> she's, just, she's just here to mock. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Ferris, dude, thank you. You're a champ. That's awesome. We're, we've been marching like the last few streams and we're like phenomenal for donations. And we're like quickly marching towards that next goal of buying a really nice digital camera for the streams. So every little bit helps. Thank you very much, Ferris. Greatly appreciate it. Um... Mode. So, hey, fishing mode. Uh, all right, so we covered what we expected to do. Um, I'm going out tomorrow. I'm going back up to the Brownie Factory in Vermont and talking to my buddy, Smallmouth Freaks. He went up there last weekend. They did okay, slow, but they caught a couple of big fish. And he expects water tends to be in the low 40s. So, I'm going out there with jerk bait, jerk bait, jerk bait, jig, blade bait, and see how it goes. I'm primarily going to go after Smallmouth. Because it's been a day since I've caught a big old fat brownie, and I really want one. So, that's kind of my main focus, but I'm open to catching largies too. 
they're kind of intermingled in the one area that I'm really hoping to hammer, and the wind's gonna change a little bit, so it could be good, it could be bad. What, what am I missing? No, no. I've been asking so many goof questions. <laughs> I was laughing at the windy one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> should throw your boat in a different lake. <laughs> <laughs> um... So yeah, that's uh, the plan. So before we really get again further into it, one of the things I like to try and do is, uh, you know, we have stream sponsors, and this week we've got two. One, Dragon Custom Tackle, and he's going to be the guy that does pretty much all the jerk bait side of things that we're going to cover. Uh, he does do a lot of jigs, but he doesn't do. He only does lead. So if you're in a late uh, state where you can do lead, absolutely check him out. He's got phenomenal prices. He puts together some really good color combos. I personally helped field test all the ones he did with the paint he uses and everything before he even started the business. Legit makes phenomenal baits. The paint holds up great. Like, if you're looking for good jigs, get in touch with him. He's good. On the other side of things, for the jerk baits, he does a bunch of customs. Uh, I don't know if he currently has jerk baits specifically on the website, but you can just reach out to him either via the website or via social media. He will get back to you. And he does some insane colors. So this is the most recent one that I got, which is based on uh, Mega Bass Vision 110 blank. And hopefully, man, I wish that stream wasn't. I can't, I can't see my. I need another monitor. But anyway, so that's like a nice red craw. This is so that was a Vision 110 blank uh, knockoff. This is a dual realist 100. I think it's 100. Um, that is like kind of a new thing he wanted to try it's got a purple back it's got like a reddish orange hue on the sides but it's like kind of clear with some nice black striping yeah, love those colors a couple of ones he did more purple and gray this is kind of something i've been really looking forward to throwing either in stained water or up for smallmouth. and it's got like a nice black <laughs> octagonal pattern drink. to it drink um this one i have already done very well on the last year two years two years that was two years ago. We were up on the New Hampshire Brownie Factory. I busted this thing out that, that day. That the day that I was like, hey. Jerkbait. And yeah, we hammered them. Yeah. So I've been looking hard for a smelt pattern jerkbait. I don't know how close I can get that. And that's kind of hard to see, but it's got like a nice purplish, but light black, um, light purple on the back. It's pretty clear elsewhere. It's got a little bit green on the nose and the belly on that dual realist plank. That has been phenomenal. Um, oh, this is another one of the dual realists. You that's, just showed that one. That's, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's more of like a kind of brown crawl with a little purple. Nice. It is. And then just kind of some, like, odd off colors I really wanted to try. It's like a blue with a green and purple belly on that, you know, 110 knockoff flank again. Absolutely phenomenal work. All the paint that he's done has held up great. I mean, again, this one's two years old, and it, it doesn't look like I've caught anything on it, but I've already caught a couple of dozen smallmouth on it. Um... And actually, even a couple of pickerel too, in a couple of spots. So, these are great. Um, from the Beast Coast side of things, for jigs, if you haven't seen anything with Beast Coast, you've been asleep in <laughs> the last every stream we've done. Yeah. They do everything. They do lead. They do tungsten. They have a phenomenal tungsten selection, uh, and they've got every style. They've got Arky heads, which is kind of your jack of all trades. They've got football jigs. They've got swim jigs, um, and then they have the hustler that hybrid finesse jig right which is this guy which is a bit of a little finesse skirt coupled with some marabou hair and it's kind of got like a, a i'm not sure what you would call that head it's it's like almost like a swim jig yeah it's arky. like a hybrid yeah, between the swim and the, uh an arky almost but it climbs through rocks like really good so on these you know first gen ones he had just a standard little I uh, kind of can't see it. Let's stand a little hook for a bait keeper. But all the ones he's coming out with now actually have a screw lock because so many guys are throwing swim baits on those. Um, absolutely check him out. You know, he's got all your standards, nice green pumpkin, but he adds these like little finesse skirts in there too, like little strands. Give it a little more flash. They look good. Um, I know this is lead, but he's got some like insane swim jigs. The Gorilla Swim Jig, phenomenal. So Dragon Custom Tackle for your lead jigs. And your custom painted jerk baits, square bills, yeah. like any hard baits, he paints them. Anything soft plastics, terminal, like tackle, uh, all tungsten stuff. You yeah. want tungsten really jigs. Want no. Beast Coast has you covered. There's yeah, links to both companies in the video description below. Like if you go to Dragon Custom mm -hmm. Tackle, use code 603 Bass at checkout, you get 10% off. So there you go. Um, 
Uh, get a few questions in there. While you're we going did. Through. Yeah, I gotta back it up. It's kind of hard to answer questions in the middle of that. I think that was the first one, Winnie. Yeah, Brady. If you're going to Winnie Saturday, what should you throw? <sighs> Depends on if you're going for large mouth or small mouth. Like I said, you're part. burning a different way. <laughs> yeah, you're you're better off to answer this because I don't go up to Winnie that early if in the I, season. Yeah, if I was if I was gonna go to Winnie now, at least there won't be any boat traffic probably. But I would say a blade bait will probably be your friend. Um, the water's going to be in the low 40s there, for sure. That's what I heard Dan was always saying to me. If you ever go up early, early spring yeah. up to Winnie, go blade bait. Yeah. You'll catch yeah. like 100 fish. Yeah, I mean, that you probably... That actually, this might, right, this might be a good chance to get a big fish up there, too. But I would I would say... Hair jig, too. Right, hair jig, hair jig, blade bait. You're probably going to have to be deep. I wouldn't... You may be able to get some on a jerk bait in some of the deeper points or deeper rock piles if the wind starts blowing a little bit, but it you might be hard pressed to do that. I would I would spend most of my time with a blade bait or a yeah. silver buddy if you know, same thing. Yeah. Hey Kristen, sorry missed you in there when you came in. Hi. <laughs> uh, Peyton, how about a crankbait? Do you um for a spring bite? Uh, well, define spring bite. It 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 depends on what water temp you're talking, but. <laughs> Kyle, how do you catch fish? Catch fish? <laughs> <laughs> we just follow you and see what you're doing and throw back in the same spots in the same baits. <laughs> you don't see me in the woods with binoculars. What are you doing today? <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, so jerk bait in the spring, I have not done in a while, so I'm not really in a good spot to answer that myself. I do know guys that have done it, and actually, even recently, and water temps around here have been hovering mid 40s. For the most part, but some guys are getting on a good square bill bite already. Um, Which they should be. I know you're big on jerk bait, but you also are big on crank bait. So yeah, yeah, jerk bait and crank bait. I caught um, when I went down. I went down to the Cape a couple weeks ago, and first trip that I went down there was horrible. And I basically drove four hours, five hours total uh, to catch a perch and a pickerel. Uh, but what I found when I was down there was that a lot of the fish that I was seeing, I went down there basically only bringing deep stuff, thinking I'm going to get them on a on a deep jig or, or like I told the other person, on a uh, blade bait. And I got down there and I actually saw a bunch of fish up really, really shallow, like a like a foot or two of water down in a, a backwater off of the lake. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Do you? So I couldn't I couldn't live with the fact that I saw that and didn't have any of the right stuff with me. So I went back like two days later with a square bill, actually a super shallow square bill that only goes down like a foot. And I between that and I got a few on a on a drop shot, but I ended up catching 13 largemouth, and I actually got nine rainbow trout on the square bill too. They were all Jesus. up in, up in like a foot of water. Up in that little area. Right now? Up in that little area. It's a crazy that's, day. Everything was stacked up in that's there. That's the yeah. first day I actually think I ever threw a glide bait and I had a pickle, pickle come up and smack it. Yeah. But it didn't take it. Cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had like one little one pounder like come out, look at it, and took off. Yep. Yeah, it's a cool it's a cool area. Uh, but yeah, so you can definitely catch them on a crankbait. I would say that the getting them up there on the square bill was probably a... I don't want to say it's a fluke, but that's a rare thing that it just happened that the water in that shallow area was much, much warmer than the rest of the lake. Mm. Um, so I would say normally, if you're going to throw a crankbait, this is like, this is a good time for those medium, medium divers. Uh, you want a flat side crankbait or something like a, a shad wrap, yep. uh, something like that. Something that, that is going to have a pretty narrow, yeah. narrow wobble. I absolutely agree with you on that, especially on the narrow wobble. Sorry, so she texted me where she went. It was the same spot we went, so you should not find that surprising for that water tap. That's a spot you... 57? It was 54, and him and I went two weeks ago. Oh, that place. Yeah. I Something weird about that place that it just gets stupid warm super early. I don't get it, but... I think that's bad, though. That's what I was thinking. Like, okay, it went from ice to 54 in, like, two and a half weeks. That's not good. Yeah, that's like the... I know what I'm doing. One of, one of the <laughs> things, like like I was talking about earlier, that I caught a bunch, not a bunch, but I caught some good fish, and then the next day I didn't get anything. I think that what I thought that warm weather would do, it did the opposite. Like yeah. It's almost like uh, this time of the year consistency is so key. Con weather consistency. And yes, that's... Kristen, we'll talk. We'll get you on some fish over there. <laughs> Talon, you need a shallow running square over the pond here, shallow through most, most of it. Like, how shallow? Like, one to two foot? You just you can slow it down, especially if you go. I think if you go with a bigger body, you can. 
crank it a little bit slower, it's not going to dive quite as easily. Um, also, you can throw a little bit of lead tape underneath it. That will help pull it down a little bit. But, nah, no, I take that back. I'm thinking. I'm still thinking about how I want it to fall up. Disregard that last point. Um, yeah, dig, just dig around. You know, it's one of those. If you go on Tackle Warehouse, you can actually, I'm pretty sure, sort um, through square bills by depth that they run. So that should be a good starting point. Uh, Grat, have you tried the Rapala OG crank designed by Octopho? I have not. You can't get any of them now. They're sold out everywhere, I think. Really? It's because he started winning money on them. <laughs> yeah, Just course. like everything. He started yeah. telling everybody what he was using. Right. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> um, all right. Let's, let's start diving into this. Let's... Hmm. What do we start with? So right now, depending on where you are in New England, water temps are probably going to be anywhere from... We'll say mid 50s, like consistently down towards the Cape area, Southern Connecticut, okay, areas like that, up to like upper 30s, right where things are still starting to just ice out in the northern reaches of, you know, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So everybody's kind of close to that, that same window. This is the time of the year where I've always been told, and I've really adopted it, jig and jerkbait are your absolute go tos. And while one is a lot better for covering water, jerkbait, than the other, jig. Both are absolutely key for producing big bites when done correctly. Um, and what correctly means can vary greatly depending on conditions. And sometimes the fish are just like, you know, who knows? Mike, shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk jerkbaits first. And I'm going to let Dennis start with this. So... What I want to do is cover your favorite jerk baits for right now, for around this area, for the conditions we've been seeing, where we've had that inconsistent weather. We've been going anywhere from low 40s to upper 40s, depending where we are, and the fish have been kind of scattered. They don't really know what to do because everything's been... Oh, <laughs> okay, Mike, now I see what he's talking about. He's talking about Ned Reese. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, oh. You two are way more versed in jerk baits, or way more confident in jerk baits too. Well versed and experienced in anything than I am, and I talk way too much, so I kind of want to hand this over and let, let's dive into jerk baits for right now. And, and we'll start with Dennis again. Where we're fishing this area, the, the different types of ponds you're going after, whether it's largey, smallies, what are you starting with, and what are you looking for when you're starting to pick your jerk baits out? You start getting into it. Sure. So I brought my bugs my most expensive bucks um so you i know you can't see this but i'll show you guys so my if i could have one jerk bait right now uh it would be this so this is the mega bass 110 plus one and that is the western clown color and you can see here that i have several of that exact one that <laughs> uh so yeah i don't don't go and buy them all because i still buy them but <laughs> but if i could only fish with one jerk bait and maybe I'm not going to say if I could only fish with one bait, but if I could only fish with one jerk bait for the rest of my life, it would be this. This is the bait that last year I caught the eight pound largemouth on. Um, I've caught lots of six pound smallmouth, five pound smallmouth, mostly up in Vermont. But I would say that anytime I'm fishing something, uh, any clear water situation where there's smallmouth involved, I know largemouth will bite it too, hence the eight pounder. But uh, smallmouth, if I'm fishing mostly smallmouth, what I'm going to do is go with a, a western clown type color like that. I have a lot of other X-Wraps and, and whatnot that are <laughs> big giant mess, big giant mess, but in all sorts of clown colors. Um, basically, the way that I look at jerkbaits... Here, please. Uh, so the, the, way, the way that I look at jerkbaits are, if I'm fishing, like I fish a lot in the lakes region up here, and anytime I'm fishing smallmouth where the water is clear and they're not relating to something like smelt or something like alewives, like in, in Winnipesaukee, the fish will get really heavy on smelt in the, in the end of the summer. And if you're not doing something that looks like a smelt, you're not getting anything. But this time of year, they're a little bit more opportunistic and they'll eat crawfish and they'll eat smelt and they'll eat perch and they'll eat other things. So during that, when they're not super keyed on the one type of bait fish, I go with these crazy colors. I go with uh, chartreuse, I go with clown, I go with pink, something like that. Um, 
you don't need to get a mega bass you don't need to spend 25 dollars i've caught tons of big fish on just an x-wrap you can see i have a lot of x-wraps in here yeah they work great they were great. I caught a six pounder on. Yeah, on one. exactly. Yeah, so color, colors colors you wouldn't colors you wouldn't even think of. Like one of my favorite colors is actually pink. Just weird, weird bright colors that'll get their attention. Um, smallmouth are curious, and they'll they'll come up from a long ways to to hit crazy color jerk baits. Um, and the the thing that I'm looking for in those lakes, basically this time of year, I'm looking for anything between probably 8 to 16 or 17 feet deep. Um, I fish a jerkbait probably deeper than some other people do. I know that you'll hear people that will catch random fish and jerkbaits out deep, but uh, usually that's why I go with that, that plus one for the mega bass because I'm fishing a little bit deeper and you have to figure that, um, figure that into your paws when you're fishing these because the fish are going to be spread out this time of year. Sometimes they're on the bottom. Sometimes they're, sometimes they're suspended. Jerkbaits work well for fish that are suspended, but I'll still use them when they're on the bottom. You just have to factor that into your paws and figure that the fish now has to swim up to your bait to get it. So that's why you want to pause a little bit longer this time of year. Give that fish some time to come up and get it. Uh, but that that's basically my my technique for clear water, small mouth. Um, if I'm going for largemouth and going in a, a smaller pond or something like that, I'm essentially going with darker natural colors. My, actually the thing that I use the most, and yeah, the thing that I use the most, and of course it's stuck so I can't show you, <laughs> but um, this is actually the one that I got randomly, I got that five pound smallmouth on it this last week, but that was unexpected. I was going for largemouth, but just a, a standard gold X-Wrap, uh, it, it doesn't really look like anything but it kind of looks like everything it's kind of the color of a crawfish it's kind of the color of a perch it's kind of the color of a bluegill and in those ponds where it's not super clear and you're getting uh you're, you're mostly targeting largemouth that that makes a good silhouette in the water and i seem to do better with that than the the brighter colors in those i usually i usually stick to those darker more natural colors when the water is a little bit darker and those brighter more vibrant colors when the water's a little bit clearer. I know that that's kind of counterintuitive, but that that's what works for me. Well, yeah, I mean, in early in the spring, like, dude, that blue kills it. Clear water, dark water, doesn't matter. But, that so blue. that, those baits we were just talking about, too, that feather on that rear treble hook, yep. in cold water, for some reason, has more drawing power. And they love them. I don't know why. It doesn't really make any sense, but it works. It's kind of like that crazy red. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense, but... That red craw is just like that that kind of money color earlier in the year, um, you know, majority of the time. Um, I don't know what it is about that feather on that rear treble, but it's funny because we were out there together last week, and then I was throwing everything without it, and I saw you throwing it with it the whole time. I'm like, you know, I should really get more jerk baits with those feathers on the rear treble. <laughs> yeah, it helps. It, yeah, it, it definitely works. It, yeah, you definitely, I notice a big difference when it's clear. I don't know if it's just that it's sitting for longer and the feather has some subtle movement, but uh, if you're fishing... If you're fishing really cold water, then then the feather can help. Like the, it doesn't. I don't even think that the color necessarily matters. Like this is a pink one with a chartreuse feather on the back. I think it helps spin but, better. Right. Yeah. I think that it the. Let it sink down I think that I think that's part of it, and I think that the other thing that it'll do is it kind of mutes the action a little bit of this. Because if you have something with just a straight hook, and you're you're really ripping it, which I, I always do. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't do it subtly. But um, I think that sometimes a jerkbait can have a little bit too much action, and you put a feather on the back of it, and it's kind of like an anchor, and it's kind of slowing down the action a little bit. And I, I think making it a little more subtle like that can can get you some extra bites. <clears throat> I dig it. That's pretty my much, spiel. You pretty much covered jerkbait on the. <laughs> I mean, I have I've caught that one pond that I went to last year a lot that you couldn't get your boat into. Yeah, yeah. There's one cove in there that's. It's like 30 to 35 feet deep. And I was throwing that white one time that I have. I don't remember the, the name of the color. But, it was, oh. but I was throwing that regular 110 over 30 feet when I was marking them on the bottom. They were coming up and smacking. Yep. It was, well, I had like 100 followers and I got like three. But they yep. were smacking it. <laughs> <laughs> Al but, Alex, does bottom composition matter with a trick bait? Yes. It, it does. It, it does. It, like those dark patches? 
Yeah, one hundred percent does. I was trying to think about that. I'm like, because I hard, I, hard lines. I, I don't think it's the jerk bait though. I think just bottom composition matters this time of year. Throughout, well, just for or fishing. Forever. Yeah, for fishing, it just matters. When yeah. when when fish when the water's really cold, generally you want to avoid gross, mushy bottom for the most part. Sometimes that stuff can heat up, and then the fish will go and get on it. But in general. Hard, hard bottom, hard cover is better when the water is really cold. Right. Yeah. So the only time the the dark, mushy bottom stuff is good is that, like immediate ice out when they just start pulling up, they're gonna gravitate towards that for that short window because that's the warmest water, right. and they're gonna almost get belly down in it because it's gonna feel really good for them, but only if it's like right adjacent to the, those good transition areas where they can you know dip right back out to deep water when it cools off right. as soon as the sun sets. Um, that's pretty much the only time fleeting we, right and then there's <laughs> other i wouldn't want to be a fish i don't like getting cold right <laughs> there's other narrow windows where that that mushy bottom stuff works but it's narrow um anyway, sorry continue <laughs> yeah I, I mean that was yeah that was it i would say the other thing about bottom co uh, composition is it will determine how deep your jerk bait needs to go like I, i've had a lot of good days where the bottom is weedy and it may be 15 feet deep, but I'm using a shallow jerk bait just to stay on top of those weeds mm -hmm. if the weeds are four or five feet tall. And that that can be something that not a lot of people do. That's a spot where everybody that goes through is going to throw a rattle trap or a spinner bait, and you can go through with a jerk bait and have, bait. <laughs> and, and having it <laughs> having it pause like that will get you bites that that other people aren't going to get, where the fish aren't going to come out and chase something flying by. So I've I've worked jerk, jerk baits like place in Nashville. Yep. I work it down to that grass, mm -hmm. and like people, what people do with rattle traps and whatnot, they just rip it out yeah. and do the same thing with a jerk bait, and then you just let it pause and sit there, and that's when I got majority of my hits there. It's just, just different. Yeah, <laughs> just different little. Just, yeah, it's not. Yeah, you can work it a million different ways, and you're still gonna get bit. But, I mean, just stupid little things you can do to try and help get bit. Yep. Just, you, just still keep it in the strike zone in those high probability areas um but doing something different from what the majority of people do mm -hmm. and i'm just i'm am guilty but you know jerk baits are still something that i'm not it's not the first thing i think of when i go out fishing most of the time okay, i have gotten confident that like when i feel it's right like i'm, I'm gonna do it yeah. um but in those instances i'm still thinking spitterbait i'm still thinking lipless and i'm, I'm sure a lot of people do because it's just a yeah, power fisherman that's why yeah, <laughs> you love the power fish, and that takes a lot of patience. It does, but you you have gotten better. I have gotten better. I do. I'm gonna go out and grind it tomorrow. I got two different jerk bets. I got a 110 junior tied on, 110 plus one junior, the junior, Ooh. and a 110 plus two. That one, yeah, that 110 plus. Yeah, junior, whatever. Then I got a half ounce football with a little 3.3 inch Even foot. Better. So. <laughs> what color? <laughs> I actually didn't do that one. That's dumb. Or all, or all the colors. <laughs> I, I don't know. In the, I think it's going to be different yeah, in the will. spring. Probably I don't, I don't think that darker color is it, but I, whatever. I mean, I got them. I'll throw it on another rod. I'll, I'll rock two different ones and see how it goes. It's probably going to be green color. That's what I have tied on. <laughs> that seems to do better in the spring. Um, you should see my, my Hustler combo I'm tied up. It's that, like, perchy kind of color. Which I should have over there, but like I got like a really nice dark green pumpkin, um, like finesse crawl trailer on it. Mm -hmm. It looks good, uh, but I can't take credit for it because I was talking to Sharon, and yeah, he it was like he showed me a picture. He's like, yeah, this color's been working well for me. And I was in my boat retying everything a couple hours ago in preparation for tomorrow, and I had the black and blue hustler like already rigged up. I was like, I'm gonna try something different, only because this place is a lot clearer than everywhere else I typically fish. So I have another. I have my black and blue. It's clear, but it's dark. Right. Well, I have my black and blue spider jig tied on too. So like, I have black and blue from there. But I was like, I'm not gonna double down on the black and blue. I'm gonna try and throw like a more natural molting kind of craw thing. Yeah, dude, try my trick. My jig trick. I forget what you did. Paul did it the other day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we can talk about that because we're we're getting into the whole jig thing tonight too. Um, but well, for jerk baits. Yeah, I saw him saying that. Jesus. Dude, when they move up, they move up. They're opportunistic. Mm -hmm. So, um, I can't really speak that well yet for jerk baits this time. There's only double down the black and blue. I, I can't, Mike. I've got, I've got another black and blue, but for the, 
this hustler jig specifically i want to try something a little different for tomorrow just because of where we're going but i already have a black and blue already rigged up and ready to go if i decide all right this isn't working i have literally all day tomorrow i'm gonna to be up there by 6 30 in the morning i'll fish till six at night i don't care um i got nothing else to do and it's a 125 mile drive so i plan on making the day worth it <laughs> that place is so good though yeah um winter was cool we had so on the way home all the ski lawns are oh yeah yeah that was good <laughs> can i get home <laughs> um i don't really have that as consistent luck with the jerk bait at the same time as you guys do like everything you just talked about until we're like closer to 50. Once it gets like high 40s, oh, low 50s, dude. then I can get a little bit because I still just lack the patience. Whack, whack, but yeah, whack, at whack, that whack, point, whack, whack, it's, it's kind of like no brainer. <laughs> um, and I guess going into that kind of next transition there for jerk baits before we, well, no, I don't want to do that. I, I want to keep like jerk bait to jig, jerk bait to jig, and then keep answering questions, but keep it all, you know, relative to kind of that same window. So you guys for jerk baits really just covered really well, like what we're doing right now. It's, Oh, man. Relatively <laughs> ice out. Yeah, you know, you elaborated on it too, though. Um, there was elaboration. There was. Um, but for me, I'm still throwing just a regular 110, or basically any four to six foot jerk bait, because most of the time I'm fishing kettle ponds. So, like, that four to six foot model jerk bait is usually, like, perfect for wherever I'm fishing, because most of these places I fish only go down to about 10 feet. Stick. So, anything deeper, yeah, it's kind of counterintuitive. It's going to slam into the bottom. Um, and then for me, oh, let's talk at this time of the year. This is the big thing, right? We, we know colors. We've talked where we're looking, what the fish could be doing. Let's talk cadence because that more than anything, two things, cadence, because that gets everybody. And that was my biggest hang up for years was I never felt confident that my cadence was, was right. If it was too slow, too fast, whatever. And what the hell are you doing with your rod and your line? Because everybody always hammered into me, you know, you're going to have your line just right tight, but not too tight because if you're moving it at all, then they're not going to bite. But if you don't have it tight enough, then you're not going to feel a bite. What's the happy medium? <laughs> you'll feel them smash it when it's cold. Either you'll feel them smash it or you're, you're just going to feel it. And that's them just like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> biting and biting and sitting. And then the next time they're like, ah! Yeah. I think, uh... In regards to cadence for me, I pretty much always start three, two, one, and then I, mm -hmm. I just repeat it. So I'll cast it out. Um, if I'm fishing shallow, I won't even reel it down. I'll just start start twitching or jerking it just from, from the end of the cast. Uh, if I'm using the deep one, I'll usually reel it down a few cranks just to get it kind of down in the water. But I'm just jerk, 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 pause, jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, pause. And then obviously not that I'm, I'm letting it sit for longer than that. But the, the rule of thumb is the colder the water, the longer the pause. Uh, I mean, I, I, you will get, you will get more bites if, um, if you let it pause longer. Generally, this time of year, uh, that the, it does help, but you can still get bites if you don't let. I mean, you don't need to let it sit for five minutes or anything. Like I, I was telling these guys before we started that I, I can't fish slow. I never really fish slow, so. When I when I fish a jerk bait, a long pause for me is maybe fifteen seconds, twenty seconds, something like that, and then I've and then gone I'm, over thirty seconds. Yeah, well, I mean, I, prob I probably yes. have in my life. Do you want another beer warm up, by the way? <laughs> yes, please. Which one? Please, the same one, please. Same Thank one. you. Right. Yeah, so I, I mean, it, you do need to you do need to let it sit. You can't just constantly move it. I think the thing to remember about a jerk bait, at least in my experience, is that you pretty. Oh no! Come on, Sean. Uh, <laughs> I didn't you, do anything. I just picked it up. <laughs> you, you pretty much won't get bit when you have contact to the bait. At least from what I've seen. Uh, just about every fish that I've ever caught on a jerk bait, which is probably thousands of fish, will bite it on slack line. Mm -hmm. So it's you. You wanna when when you're jerking jerking the the bait. Um, you wanna start. You want to start on slack line and you want to finish on slack line. You always want to let it pause on slack line. And that's why it's, that's why it's so important that you have good hooks on your jerk bait. Um, thank you. Welcome. Like I said, like you, you don't need to, you don't need to have a 110. You don't need to spend $25 or $30 on a bait, but 
if you if you do buy <laughs> if, <Jesus. laughs> it's still going <laughs> if you if you do buy like a, a less expensive jerk bait just make sure that your hooks are sharp because what you what you have to consider is that these fish are biting it when there's no tension on it so your hook is basically grabbing the fish with without a hook set yeah and jerk baits usually have pretty sticky hooks so. right you especially yeah especially the the good ones yeah. and that's why that same reason is why your rod is so important too because if you use a rod that is really really stiff then when you do go to move it again that essentially is your hook set and you figure that the fish ate it on slack line so if you just really yank it then a lot of times you'll just pull that jerk bait right out of the fish's mouth so you need to have a little bit of give on the tip of uh, of your rod, so that when you do go to move it again, you're not just yanking it out, and you can you can let the fish have that bait like for a second. You wouldn't be using a, like a, like a heavy no. bait. You, you yeah, wouldn't do it. Yeah, you definitely you would not you would not use a, a heavy or a medium heavy. I, I always go medium on a jerk bait. What, what is he doing, Sean? <laughs> oh, it's hot down here. Uh. I'm sweating. Dude, it's hot in here. I instead of a fan, get some airflow going in I here. Thought you're, I thought you're doing that to dry the beer. Like, no, no, <laughs> that much didn't smell. Dude, it's like <laughs> eight, ten degrees cooler out there I than it is in this is. room. <laughs> you missed everything. We gave away all our secrets. Yeah, that's all right. I still won't be able to catch fish anyway, even if I knew it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I, same thing with three, two, one. I usually do like three or four casts with three, and then I'll do three or four casts with two, and varying what like time that I wait between jerks and then I'll, you know, I'll even go down to one and I'll just kind of jerk it along or jerk jerk and then just kind of like a little drag yep. just to see if they'll come up and chase it if they got a follower yep it all it all depends on what they're biting and you just gotta you just gotta stick to it and just pretty much just grind it grind them until you figure out what cadence they want and then once you figure it out it's it's almost like clockwork. They'll, they'll hit it. Yeah, nonstop. pay attention when you get a bite. Pay attention to what you were doing, how long you let it pause, how many jerks you did before it paused, things like that. What you were fishing over, if there was any boulders down there, or if it was, if it was near timber, in the shade. The wind is huge too. Like if the wind, if the bank is getting blown, usually they're they're gonna be stacked up on there. Yeah. That so, goes with everything. Now. I've kept. My approach has been pretty simple and straightforward, even down to like what we're uh, right about now, like mid 40s. One long pause, one two, and you, the the two jerk approach is the only time I really vary things, and I go from like a violent snap to like a subtle to two violence, and then like kind of like a one second pause between the seconds, so it's almost like a one pause one. Um, Sometimes doing a really taut line. Sometimes I do it like super slack line. That I'm, but for me, I've always just kind of done the two jerk thing. Um, but it's worked for me because almost every single fish hits it after that first one, and I set the hook on on that second one. And you can tell, and that's what really got me because the other thing was I couldn't really tell at first, like what the hell am I supposed to feel? Oh, you'll what feel am it. I expecting it? And it, so on that second like, snap, you hit a fucking oh, right, wall. It, it either <laughs> it either just stops. Or the way I've always explained it was it feels like you set the hook into a spring. Like, it it comes back. You're like, oh, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, like, okay, yeah, there's a fish there. Um, it's a good way to describe it. Yeah, like, that was that was always, like, nobody could tell me. Like, ah, oh, just, you just got a fish. I'm like, okay, but what? And that's, like, the first year that I did really well with it, almost every hook set felt like I was setting the hook into, like, a really loose spring. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the rod absolutely returned back to that point. Where it's, like, no resistance and whoo! Back it goes. Yeah, and they're hitting and they're going. Man. You missed us talking about that. That's why we said the rod is so important when you do it. So now we got questions about that. Um, so, uh, Brendan, we'll, we'll have to talk about chatterbaits another night, buddy. That's uh, kind of not in tune with the overall discussion. And that that's like a, a deep dive. We actually kind of covered that last week when we were talking about favorite baits and stuff. Uh, chatterbait was that in that conversation. Um, yeah, so Guggen Slayer. I don't like your name. Um, I was fishing my jerk bait faster than normal the other day in 52 degrees. Uh, dude, when the water gets into the low 50s, especially for smallmouth, you can fish that so aggressive. Uh, and that's a thing I learned a couple of years ago. And like last spring, really hammered that point home. 
we could see them. It was, water was 50 to 52 degrees. It was 50 when we started. It was up on the, um, you know, one of the big glacial lakes up in northern New Hampshire. It was 52 by the end of the day. Glass smooth. Not a breath of wind. Uh, bright blue skies. But we were cracking on Ned Rigs on any, like, big rock you can find near Chunky Rock. And then that bike kind of died. And my buddy was fishing at Jerkbait. And, you know, he was doing, like, kind of, like, long pauses. And then when he was burning back to the boat, they chased it. So I was like, well, let me try something. Bomb it way out, snap it violently ten times, pause, and then just get smoked. So you'd have to get it working super aggressive to get their attention. They wouldn't close on it and just work in a random pause. And that would be enough for them to just close the distance and smack it. And that works. But, you know, once you get into, like, the low 50s, especially smallmouth, like, jerkbait really, really, really turns on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it gets easier. But, so, Grat. Do you upsize your rod or line on a plus two braid to fluoro? Nope. Seems like they have a lot of resistance. No, either. That's just me, though. I'm different. No, yeah, don't use fluoro. On, I mean, don't use braid on it. No. Use never. only fluoro. Either either mono, I guess, but even mono I wouldn't do um, unless it's warm and you're working it fast anyway. I personally prefer fluoro. When the water's really cold, copolymer, a fluorocarbon monofilament because it's more naturally buoyant. And that's the thing I learned just recently. So if you get that fluorocarbon coated monofilament, fluoro tends to sink, mono tends to float, the two of them together kind of cancel each other out, and your jerkbait will better suspend in like 45 degree water or colder. Something to think about. Um, and for me, pretty much only 10, 12 pound straight fluoro, although I will, I actually have two rod setups. One's straight 10 pound fluoro, one's straight 12 pound fluoro. Um, and I actually like in physics for that because it's a it's a pretty stretchy I don't like it that's why I only like it for my crankbait applications anything treble hooks light duty like that like that extra stretch is kind of nice um I can't I, I, I need to feel my bait I, I need to feel it I need that no stretch none I don't like it. I can't I can't do it I do the same thing I don't use Invisex but I use Sunline but um which one FC Sniper? Yes. Yeah. But I you, I have one rod that has 10 pound, and I have one rod that has 12 pound. I would say if you're using the plus two, uh, don't... Yes, we're throwing them on casting gear. That's true. Um, don't throw braid with a jerk bait. It's not a good idea, because one, there's... It, it doesn't... It just doesn't... It, it almost has too much action to it if you use braid. And the other thing, especially if you're using a plus two, is that braid floats and... The idea of the plus two is that you're basically getting down as deep as you can, so the braid is just gonna not let it go as deep down as it as it could go. So it's you're better off using a sinking line like fluorocarbon or, or copolymer. But uh, in regards to do you upsize your rod, I I don't. Um, I I will usually go to 12 pound line instead of 10 pound line with that, but that's not necessarily because of the bait. That's more that when I'm fishing the plus two. Uh, I'm usually just trying to get lower in the water column and there's more of a chance that I'm gonna hit a rock or hit something on the bottom and I don't want to lose a $25 bait because I ran into a rock right. so I, I do usually use the 12 pound instead of 10 pound but it's not I, I don't switch rods or anything like that I am like weird that. then huh yeah because you use straight 15 floral yep do you know I mean? Really, the only thing you it's fool. doing is it's limiting your depth. <laughs> you fool. The, the higher That's line fine. weight you go, the shallower whatever you're doing is going to run. It works for me. So, I mean, <laughs> you catch plenty of fish. I haven't seen it slow you down at all. <laughs> uh, hey, Carl. Sorry. Missed you in there. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Um, but, but, uh, we covered that. Grat, Carl, again. We had to pick three colors of Vision 110s to use. What would they be? I'm not even going to say... Well, I, I can actually give you three Vision 110s, but I'll open it up beyond that. And actually, we'll go Andrew first. We had to pick... I don't three. even know the names of them. Well, pick them. them out. Show them. Oh, yeah, he's got... I, I can see yours right there. Yeah. This one, and um, the white one. The white one? Mm, it's in my truck. I don't even have that white one. It's in my truck. I'm going to go grab it real quick. Nah, I mean, you could you, probably you just say, say that one you could probably say it's a white one. It's, it's a white one. <laughs> I got mine. I don't even know the name of this color. Of this one. Elegy Bone. Is that the one it is? Yeah. Elegy Bone. Yeah. So this one is one of my favorite Vision 110s. Is that the question? The Vision 110. Yeah, they okay. specifically ask specific favorite colors one. for 110s. Yeah. This is Elegy Bone. 
it just where I've worked I worked this thing in clear water dirty water it just works this color is just with the chartreuse on the bottom the purple it just works and I got another one I don't remember it's a white one I don't remember the name of it though remember that Ooh, one that one was there's mm. one day where you specifically had that and you killed it like a flat was it that yep it was very 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 close to that it was all white but it had that it was, weird it was, chromatic it color was thing clear in the middle with the with the rainbow yep. chrome thing or dude. Sorry, I just ah, sorry, nope, drink. Was very close. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I bought the white 110 because it has that that like rainbowy kind of Yeah, but that the white one it works amazing. Oh, sorry. That was right in front of the mic. That was loud. So, I don't know if you did three. I don't care. Um, <laughs> so my I only used to. my three favorite um, this uh, I'm not gonna remember the name of it, but this <laughs> uh, it's so this is like a blue. I like that. Hey, I don't know how you would, I, don't, I don't know how you would describe it. Yeah, it's blue with like a gold yellow hue on the bottom, and then white on the bottom. It looks exactly like an ale wife, and that's why it's one of my favorites. I spend a lot of time at Champlain. And this looks just like the alewives that they that they eat at Champlain. So when the smallmouths get start schooling up and eating alewives, this is pretty much the best thing that you could possibly use. So that's definitely in there. Uh, my all-around go-to that I talked about in the beginning is Western Clown. Any of the lakes region lakes in New Hampshire, any really clear water, this works at Champlain too. Uh, basically, like I said earlier, anytime the fish aren't keying in on, like if the fish are eating a school of alewives, uh, they'll probably still bite this, but they'll bite the other one better. But gold just works right, right here. Right, exactly. But any any time other than that, uh, this is a good color to just throw around and just kind of fish down the bank or just fish randomly to try to find some some schools of fish. Uh, this always works. And then my third would be uh, this is Tennessee shad, I believe, or something like that along those lines. But uh, this is a good largemouth color. It's just uh, gold, gold yellow tan. Uh, and then like purplish white on the bottom, and it, it like yeah, like got a little got a little chartreuse spot on the back or on the end. Um, looks pretty similar to a perch. Good profile for a perch. Good. I know that it doesn't have the stripes like a perch, but when this thing is flashing in the water, it, it looks pretty close to a perch. So yeah, those are mine. I'm gonna I'll go quick because we're like we're kind of lagging behind the conversation here. G I don't know if it's GB Pro Blue, but the Pro Blue like that. Large mouth, stained water, where it's that blue back, kind of clear side, a little bit of orange in the belly. Sue me. Large mouth and dark water, that has been my go-to. Um, rainbow trout for small mouth. This thing has been killer for me. I've had more luck on this than the perch pattern. Though the perch pattern is a very close second on this. And this one's a little different. I don't even know what it's called. It's got a black back, gold sides, bright orange belly. I like that. There is a couple of choice windows. Where that is ridiculous. Is that a one Yes, it is. Absolutely ridiculous. But again, it's a very narrow set, like narrow situations where I throw that. And it's, I love it. Like, yeah. I, I, I know when it's coming because there's other Better baits that I throw and all of a sudden, like, I'm like, yep, that's the color. I bust that thing out and I have a phenomenal day for small fish. <laughs> um, so those are my go-tos. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it's some, I mean, that's my big boy. <laughs> Uh, Kyle, you recognize that one. I've had good luck on this so far, too. Another gold one, but that's a um, Lucky Craft, but that's like a 150 or something like that. That's a big jerk bait. I mean... Yeah, I like those. That looks good. Yeah, it's Can I do that? Isn't it? <laughs> hard, hard hands. Yeah, anyway, that's it compared to a 110. Like, it's a big jerk bait. Um, honorable mention for another gold, but those are, are my go-tos. Um... Oh boy, we are way behind. Always a leader of using braid. Uh, Killer Kawaguchi is probably the best smelt color. Huh, I'm looking at that one. Ben, what's up, Dennis? F and I watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about hooks? Do you change red hooks to grat? No, I don't. Me show, Joey's Jason, show the pro perch. Okay. <laughs> I have it a lot. <laughs> one thing I don't like about the 110s are the hooks. The you know, only thing you don't like? Yeah, it's weird how the barbs are backwards. I hate them. I've lost so many fish on them. So I can't show you all my perch because one of them is. 
somewhere. What the hell is that? I had four different 110 perches. Yeah, for the, for the person that asked about the Braden Flora leader, uh, Slaunch Beast Crew is correct. You'll, st you'll still pull hooks if you do that. Um, you can use it for when you're fishing on top, but if you're if you're fishing where you can't see the bait, you can't see the strike, then you, you definitely want to avoid braid if you can. Hang on. All right, I have three different... Well, I have four. I have, like, a regular 110 perch, and I don't remember what the heck I did with it, but, like, that's kind of the standard, and it's almost kind of see-through, but, like, that's about as, like, northern perch as you get. And then I've got... I think this is actually called northern perch or natural perch. I really like that. It's a little bit more mat. subdued um, and not as translucent. And then I had to get the matte perch just because I like perch. Um, and I have pretty much everything ever made for a fishing lure in a perch powder because they're so friggin' prevalent up here. So why not? Um, I'm absolutely going to hook myself a thousand times in here. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, Salt Beast Crew is absolutely right. Red DCT one is cool. Yeah, Guggen. So there's... A couple that I had from him in that 110 and that I mean that's just like a straight like red craw which is awesome and then there's this like other one that's kind of like a purpley brown craw I'm not sure you want to call it it was something he cooked up that just came out amazing and that's on the dual 110 um, or dual realist blank but I have a 110 blank in that same scheme so I just what, busted out the duo so I can show something a little different so what I did with this one is I took a red sharpie Holy and I crap. outlined the gills. Yep. And that increased the bite. Yep. Like. We were just saying you should do that and just add a little bit of orange right there. Or that could be done. I actually have the markers in my boat to do that. Um, right, so we are 50 minutes in basically since we started the stream, but we haven't even touched jigs yet. But I think at this point we have like really covered everything that can be talked about for jerk baits. From now up until basically spawn. You know, right now, working slow, mix it up a little bit. What? Anywhere from 5 to 15 seconds is kind of the window we're looking well, at for pauses. I haven't been out in the water Usually. in a week. And That's what I've been People are saying it's around 50s. Yeah, mid, so mid 40s to I upper would 40s, say lower. Maybe like a 5 to 7 second wave. Yeah. Maybe like 1, 2. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what it, I told you, right? When I was out, yeah, 5 second pause was doing it a yeah. couple days ago. That was 47 degrees. Now so. that it's above 30, now you can actually... Don't <laughs> yeah. have to wait. I can actually <laughs> wait use the 30 rail. seconds. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's when it starts to get fun. Yeah, it should work pretty well up until water gets to 58, 59, something like that. I use them all summer. Yeah, I, I mean, but then there's other things that work well, too. <laughs> yeah, true. There was <clears throat> another one I saw. Oh, Joy of the Catch. Okay, sorry. I saw your comment earlier, but I see you just put it back in there again. <laughs> Kyle. 15, good for shallow grass. Kyle, Drew, 15 on a jerk, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it works for me. <laughs> Alright, so enjoy the catch. Kayak tournament coming up in a couple weeks here in New Hampshire. Average depth is 6 feet, max depth of 13, smallies and largies. Plan on pre-fishing, just curious how you would target them. It well, depends on which one tough. you want to go. You have it in a couple weeks and you're going to be fishing now? It's gonna, it's gonna the conditions are going to be wildly different. Drastically it's, different, yeah. It's going to be... Right. Water could be... It's going to be eight impossible or, to Eight predict. to nine degrees warmer in yeah. a couple weeks. Right. Or you can hit a mega cold front, which New England is so well known for this time of the year, and they'll absolutely shut it down, and then it doesn't matter what you throw. Right. <laughs> He's right. I do crush pickerel with those drink baits. He knows. Sorry, right, Murph. Um, <clears throat> yeah, nice. man, like... <laughs> Obviously, I mean, so this is why we're talking about this. Like, you, your two go-tos that I, got, like, that like I absolutely firmly weeks. believe you should have tied in right now is a jerk bait and a jig. As for what you throw for a jig, like, man, it, it could be anything. Just like a standard skirted football jig with, like, a three-and-a-half-inch craw trailer, you're fine. You want to go with something a little bit more finesse, like a Beast Coast Hustler with, or any other hair jig. And a hair jig, you don't even need to throw a trailer on it. You can throw it as is. You can throw a little plastic chunk on there. Like, literally just a one-inch chunk of plastic that I know kind of helps flare the hair out, makes it fall slower. Um, gives a little bit more bulkier-looking profile. You could do that. You could do just a spider jig on a football head or a ball head jig. Like, you know, like, you've got you've got to have, in my opinion, this time of the year, your bottom baits covered whoa, whoa. and your middle, like, suspended baits. And that's why jig and jerk bait, if those only two baits that you could get absolutely well-versed in, 
you've got everything covered. It doesn't matter if they're suspended, down the bottom, looking up, feeding down. You're going to get bit on one of those two. And that's why I've tried so hard to get so good with a jerkbait. Because I live by a jig. And I, I got that covered. But I'm working still on getting, like, as good with a jig with a as I am with a jig as with something that's suspended so tie on one tie on both man you know find one that you're happy with get in touch with you as you get close to that tournament let me know what you're looking at for water temps and stuff I will help you dial in your choices grat thank you grat you have my gratitude ha <laughs> grat grat <laughs> I'm waiting for him to get mad <laughs> alright man <laughs> Thank you, Grad. Yeah, buddy. I Hey, I'll be on the road at 3.30 in the morning or 4 in the morning, so I, I feel you. <laughs> Have a good night, man. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Um, so I guess so on the topic of jigs, and now this is now we're in an area where Dennis doesn't get to talk. Um, true. I know. <laughs> jigs. See you, bye. <laughs> we're talking ice out to like the next couple weeks, like we're, especially right now, where we're all over the place, and... Slaunch Beast Crew, if you're still here, you absolutely, by any means, feel free to chime in on this, too. We, I know we kind of covered this a little bit when we were talking. We've covered this every week. Yeah, like every Since which way, started. shape, and form. Um, so we can kind of go over this a little bit more quickly because jerkbaits are really the thing we haven't talked about a lot, but jigs are. But what do you want to be throwing for jigs? Like right now, we're talking water is mid-40s. It's been climbing. We're in a cold, um, you know, kind of a, a warming trend. Things are starting to heat up, um, both literally and figuratively. The fish are starting to get a little more aggressive. What is your go-to, and what are you doing to change your presentation over the next two weeks? I'm still throwing black and blue. I will until ice in. <laughs> Just because it, it always works. I will switch it up once the water does get a little warmer to a lighter, maybe like a, like a green pumpkin or something like the Hustler. Yep. Like that brownish... So this, that, that's exactly what the Hustler is into. That's the dirt bag. So it's a black bag. and brown. It's a black and brown. A little darker. Or lighter. But I, right now, if I was to go out tomorrow and it was 65, 70 degrees, and I'm going straight for rocks, straight for timber, I'm tossing that in up as close to the bank as I can and working all the way out to the end of the tree or working that through the whole, whole boulder pile, and they will find it. You will find the fish. And Specifically, what are you going to do for your cadence and aggressiveness in your... Guys, I think that's the thing that really gets people... I mean, with everything, really. But specifically when it comes to jerkbaits and jigs, like, how fast are you working it? Are, are you, like... And are you hopping it? Are you still keeping it on the bottom I'm and hugging I'm it the whole way? I'm still dragging it. I'm still going to drag it. And if I will work up over a rock, I'll let it sit. But I'm not going to let it sit for 30 seconds. I'm going to let it sit. And if has, something hasn't hit it for 5, 10 seconds... I'm just going to drag a little more, same thing, and just keep doing that up and over all the rocks. But I'm going to work it a lot faster than I would be if it was 40, 40 degree water, 37, 38, and it's getting up to almost 50s. I'm going to be working that a lot faster. Joy, Rich. Joy, thank you. Thanks, Joy. Joy. Greatly appreciate it. Again, seriously, like, keep us updated. Message either me or Andrew or even Dennis. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, Someone's going to get back to you. <laughs> yeah, well, you message us. me. And again, I'll, do that I'm bad at it, so. I'll give you everything I can <laughs> absolutely do to help. Thank you. It was greatly appreciated. Um, you guys have an opinion on why black and blue works so well? I mean, I'm, I'm not a big jig person, but I do recognize that black and blue works when it's cold. Is there... you have an opinion on why? Because it works. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I've always felt that... The crawfish are like damn near black when the water's yeah, really cold. Be a lot darker. They're, they're just super dark. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure Helgramites Helgramites are like too. black. Oh, they are black. When the water's really cold. No, they're black, black all the time. Then, then, and I, that's got to be turn. it. It's something yeah. I never really gave thought oh. to until the last couple of years. Joey the catch knows me. Oh, there you go. Actually, I remember you, Kyle. I think Kyle. Thanks for nice. Thanks for joining. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, that, I mean, that's that's my best guess. A lot of bottom-dwelling creatures are going to be a lot darker because they're going to want to mix in with the mud, with the leaves, with the sticks, everything, just to blend in. Yep. And the fish sees something like, fish sees this coming across the bottom, they're not just going to be like, oh, just scoff at it and leave. They're just going to be like, oh, shit, that looks like something I always eat. Right, yeah. It just kind of blends in, but it's moving. Oh, he yeah. said yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and then, so, to elaborate on that... 
and to the question I asked you, how are you changing your jig as the water starts to slightly warm up? I'm gonna put on a different trailer. I'm either a bigger trailer. I mean, I'll fish a bigger trailer. If I'm fishing a bigger trailer in colder water, I'm gonna fish it a lot slower. If I'm fishing that, but when it warms up, I'm gonna be fishing a bigger trailer, but I'm gonna make it a trailer that has a lot of action in the legs. So when it's falling, it's really moving going down. And something, something that just really pisses the fish off when, it, when it's falling. But I don't want a super fast fall yet. I still want to use 3 8 to the, probably strictly 3 8 at that point. Yep. With it right now. Because it's, it's, those trailers are going to get enough water with that speed to really make a commotion going down. And then same thing, when it hits the bottom, it just works every nook. But keep, I don't know how to say it. Don't fish as slow as you would if it was 30 degrees. <laughs> right, yeah. <clears throat> so, I, I basically do the same thing, but... I'd be dragging, I'll be dragging it. I'm trying to keep bottom drag. contact, but yeah. I'll vary up my retrieve a little bit. I'll go right. from just straight dragging, and I'm keeping my rod flat. Like, I'm trying to make sure that it maintains bottom contact the whole way. So, I'm keeping the rod tip low, and I'm going straight across my body. So, there's no way I'm trying to lift. I'm trying to keep the line low, bottom contact the whole way. But... Then I'll switch and I'll just kind of and just kind of twitch the rod a little yeah. bit. I'm not trying to lift the jig and make it swim. I'm trying to make it do little hops across the bottom. Right. So really close to the bottom, and it's kind of like that in between. Like it looks aggressive, but it's not because it's not really making a ton of movement. If I'm working across riprap, I'm dragging it. I'm going from left to right or right to left, whichever way you're set up. And as soon as I hit a rock, I switch. I go up and I work up and over the rock. And as soon as it falls down, I bring in my slack and I start bringing it right to left or right, left to right or whatever. I cross that riprap until I hit another big rock. And I come up and over the top and then work it across the bottom. Rock, yep. Rock low. You're at rock low, low. like in, <clears throat> in the water sometimes. Yeah. Like, no joke. Really, I do that and it works. It just, you can feel it all. And as the water gets a little bit warmer, when we go over those rocks, it's going to do the same thing as you. Like, water's cold, I'm going to drag it up and... I, it's a very, very slow, deliberate movement, so I can feel it just grind up that rock. And the moment I feel it break free, I drop my rod yeah, tip because right I right want down. to hug that rock and fall right down the profile with it. Work the sunny side of the rock. Yep. Early in the morning, well, yeah. like if it, if it's early in the day, work the sunny side of the rock. If you're more towards the afternoon and it's still warming up, you can work more towards the shady side of the rock. Right. They and will they will work their way into the shade. And then as it gets warmer. Instead of slow dragging and letting that jig fall, bingo, <laughs> pop it right up the top. And same thing, like, get it to the top and quick little snap of the wrist so you get it to pop up a little bit and fall down. But anything that's watching it, like, that's where you kind of get your reactionary bite. You know, like, now you're talking, like, almost crankbait territory, right? Yeah, like where you're just same. trying to deflect shit. Like, that's the same principle with a jig. You hit the rock and just quick snap it up and over. It's going to come down right on the other side of it. And if they're following it up or if they're down and kind of looking up in it because they can hear it dragging across the rock. They're like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, and all, all of a sudden, sudden <laughs> you see this crayfish looking thing come freaking popping off the rock. They're just going to boom. Smoke it. Smash it. Like immediate pre-spawn when the water is like already like mid 50s and up to like well into the post-spawn. A jig around big boulders like that is so good. Oh, you're going to catch more four pounders, five pounders. It's going to be insane. You're, you're going to love it. Yeah. That's why I fell in love with them. Caught my first over five. What the hell was that? I don't remember. That was before you and me? I think so. Before you guys? Yeah. Before us? There was a time before. There was the before times. The before times. <laughs> we don't talk about those times. We don't talk about those times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watch, listen to Brock 101. What about... <laughs> what about football jigs? Rocks. Boulders. Clear. So you like guys, anything not vegetation. I'm going football 100% of the little, time and there's I mean, no grass. I use them all the time, but if I'm going strictly to a place where I know there's a lot of grass, I will throw anything else. I will Arcane. literally throw a, a, a swim jig. A swim jig. Yeah, you, you'd throw that more. I, I throw, I rarely throw a swim jig unless I'm literally swimming it. Yeah, I don't if ever really swim them. Yeah, if there's any vegetation, I go Arky, which, um... Because they have, a head, they have a head more like this that's going to really just go dart through straight through the grass, and you can work down the bottom, pop it up through the grass. Yep. 
and it I mean, works killer. I want to, I do want to try the Arky. I really only use like a couple of them. I do like them. You can work it. It's like same thing. It's I, it's no different. It just slides through the vegetation a lot better. Right. Um, but it, it found her on Champlain on an Arky. Okay, I'm gonna try Arky's this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Mike hit it right in the head. It's a, it's an all purpose Greasy. for grassy <laughs> greasy grass legs for the greasy grass legs it just it works well you can crawl through rocks just fine it, it, I think with a half ounce or heavier it will try and kind of stand a little bit not as reliably as a football head but it kind of wants to do it uh, otherwise if there's no vegetation I get away with it I'm going football like every single time I just I have way more confidence in a football jig because I know it's doing what I personally like it to do the only Ooh. time I throw a jig in the grass thank you Carl damn Carl thank you Hugely appreciated, man. Thank you. The only time I throw a jig in the grass is when there's not any boulders anywhere. And I'm kind of forced to do it. Unless I start seeing fish up in the grass like that and I either break off something I can't throw up there, I'll toss a jig up there and hope for the best. But yeah. <laughs> it's usually around hard structure is where I'm throwing jigs. And that's mainly what I fish is hard structure. One of the things I really want to do this year, which I haven't done because a Texas rig just works so well for me, is working a jig in thick vegetation. Like, if they're in, like, where you were, where you just caught that five pounds. Remember ball. that tournament we did? Mm hmm. And I called out, like, four fish in, like, 20 minutes? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. I took Ben to Champlain once. He got a six pounder on a jig. No kidding. Better about six six pound smallmouth. He, 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 did, he did better than me on that trip. That's awesome. <laughs> He's the one that I told you I'll fish five days a week and he'll come with me once and catch like double the amount of fish. Yeah. <laughs> Classic Ben, the luckiest person alive. <laughs> um, oh, nice, nice. That's awesome, Ben. So where you just caught that five pound smallmouth? Um, if you go back towards the launch, so if you're standing on the boat launch and you go immediately to the right, the like yeah, the beach is in there, like. Have you been there where the milfoil has been up? No, I've only gone there this time of year when it's like really cold still. The milfoil is bad over there, but it's fun. Like if you want to go there and, and like pitch a Texas rig and like some thick stuff, yeah, just do it there. And it, dude, it's yeah. so much fun. Yeah, but you, that's you'll get a hundred fish. Right, that's where I, I feel like I really need to get into something like the um, the I'm gorilla jig I'm from the middle East Coast. Do it out there. Yep. Where those big patches of lily pads are. Yeah. Yeah, dude. The lily pad patches that are like a north end, like kind of in the middle now, too. Like, you gotta go in there in the summer and take yeah, a look. I, I, I've never seen a, you gotta go in a lily pad summer. there. <laughs> oh, go in June. It's crazy how much there is. I think yeah. this is the warmest that I've fished there. Warmest water that, that it's had when I've been there. And it was 47. <laughs> huh. No, well. no, Mike, you're right. Milfoil is not bad, per se. Like, in, in some cases, you know how it gets. Sometimes around, I'm choking out. Here, it, it gets horrendous. It runs rampant. Yeah. Um, and in this case, at this lake, it's actually kind of helping because it's a giant empty bowl, um, but it's it's made oh. things difficult because Just of let it go, man. <laughs> how much oh. it is really starting to take over in a really short amount of time. So it's, it's changing things. It's just something you have to work around. But I was still like Texas rig into that, and I need to start differently and throw a see jig and a big old trailer and get her in there. Go to three eight ounce jig style, Arky or brush pitch style. I do football. My go-to is always a football in every uh -huh. situation, unless it's grass, then I'm going Arky. I'm venturing out beyond that, but I really haven't had to yet. If I can't make a football work, I make an Arky work. And if they're biting a jig, I'm catching fish. If I can't make a, a, a football work, something's wrong. You use a football jig in wood? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That thing freaking... Bump, 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 bump. Dude, you, you, like, it <laughs> comes up, and it's, it's weird, because the head kind of catches... But it doesn't get snagged. It catches and it pops out. Yeah, so it's catches good. and it oh, it's rolls. good. It's yeah. really good. It catches and it rolls out. Yeah, yeah. I never tried that. I've yeah, it almost only like, used them on rocks. It, it comes up and under, and it it catches the eyelet, and it kind of does this, and then you just and it, it like <laughs> kind of pop and rolls out, and it's it works killer. Yeah. Um, I learned. You learned. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, and you're absolutely right. And there's a couple of spots. And one of the other things that people always say with milfoil, too, is if you can find hard pack bottom mm. inside the milfoil, like, that's really where you want to be. And I know mm. of <laughs> the two spots on the pond we were just talking about. I was about. literally just going to say, I took a kayak out there, and I was towing my buddies there on floats behind me. We went camping there. And uh, we were out in the middle, and you could see clear sand spot in the middle. I was like, what? In the middle of the weeds? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, in the middle of the lake. 
pretty much. It, yeah. And it's I was just one like, leg. what the hell? And I looked down, dude, there had to been four or five fish over four pounds just chilling right there. My buddy's like, get me out of here! <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts. Um, wow, 920. Wow, we have covered a lot, and yet still not a lot. Um, any other questions for jerk baits or jigs? I could go on with jigs forever. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's great. Like, I, they're, they're both so good, and they're so versatile. I mean, dude, how many different jerkbaits do we have on here? I've got a ripstop. That's a jerkbait that only goes down to two feet. I've like, caught anything on one of those. I've rarely thrown them, but I, I bought these specifically for that, that one spot down towards the cave, where, like, the deepest water we found was five feet. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the yeah. first place we went last year. And it's super, no, two years ago, and it's super choked with weeds. Like, that's where that would be key. Because mm -hmm. it's only going to go down about two feet, and it may be kind of a stupid thing, but if you want something suspended, cheap as it may be, that's the only thing that's going to work. We've got a bunch of 110s, a bunch of duos. We've got, you know, one giant jerk bait. That's when they're, like, feeding real aggressive. There's a question you haven't talked about. You still use some fluorocarbon, absolutely. Line, and, the rocks. line and rods yeah, for absolutely. jigs? Oh, okay, so we, we covered rods last week. Um, and Andrew and I are basically the same. Um, seven foot-ish, um, I have a seven two. Medium heavy, too heavy. Um, I prefer a medium heavy, maybe a little on the heavier side of medium heavy. Fast, fast action. If I and, could get an extra fast and a, and a medium heavy, I would, I would have bought it. That's what I was going in looking for, but they had the fast, and I'm happy with it. Yep. And it's a good mix because even if you're throwing like a three eighths ounce jig with like a three and a half inch trailer, so you know it's still kind of big, but you're on the lighter side of big, you can still bomb that. But if you want to throw a three quarter ounce football with a five inch jig trailer too, you're not, it's not too heavy. You can still bomb that. Like a seven to seven and a half foot medium heavy fast rod is just anything in that range, man. You're good. Mm -hmm. um, but then for line. I still personally prefer straight fluoro for yeah, my yeah. jigs. Yep. And I know plenty of guys that go the whole game. It's either straight fluoro, straight braid, or braid to a fluoro leader. Uh, Kyle, doesn't Kyle use... I think Kyle does uh, braid, braid to fluoro leader. leader. Kyle, you still here? Chime in, please. I'm um, not sure, but I... Because I know he does that with a lot of stuff, but I'm not sure if he does it with a jig or not. I'm pretty sure he said he does. And then so that other guy, um, Which John... Which makes sense, because you get the sensitivity. Right. And, well, and that's the thing, but... But when I'm setting the hook on a jig fish, I am not letting that. I'm not holding... And I'm not going to try and rely on a lead or not. Right. Well, and, <laughs> and there's... I mean, <laughs> I not going to happen. My, I mean, I, I went overboard. Like, I like just the feel of straight fluoro. Plus, fluoro has all the abrasion resistance in the world that you need, which I like, because I like fishing rocks and timber more than anything. I don't mind fishing grass, but I prefer hard structure. You absolutely need fluoro if you're going to do that. If you do braid, you're going to have a bad day. Mm -hmm. Break on everything it's just terrible for hard structure like that wood it's not too bad but rock forget it um but yeah having that braid absolutely helps with that sensitivity i know plenty of guys that swear by it and i know guys that fish you know anywhere from 40 to 60 pound braid to a 20 pound floral leader and they'll tie you know that's one of those if you're tying a leader dude tie like 20 feet long you're gonna have like no stretch on a leader that long even on mono like or mono you still have a little bit of stretch but it's pretty short all things considered it's not going to stretch that much and you're still going to get the benefit of the braid for sensitivity unless you're pitching the structure right in front of your face um so did you find your angle bass yeah. fishermen you have a tendency to long cast a jig first pitch pitching it all depends on what you're fishing or where you're fishing if if it's super clear you want to you're going to want to throw further casts and yeah. if you're pitching or if you're it fishing means, holes in grass or something, means, you yeah, kind of have to it pitch. Means you're, right? you're trying to pick apart some sort of structure. Like I'll pitch, I'll pitch a tree for an hour. Yeah, hit, you're gonna hit it sometimes 30, 40 times, and that mm -hmm. fish will be there that whole time. Mm -hmm. You just need to hit the spot at the angle to get them to bite. Yeah, they could be coming off at like a one degree angle from where they're facing, and they're just like, mm, no. Yeah. And then you come right at them. They're so they're 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 gonna try and put in the least amount of effort. I mean, if it's hot out, they're going to go for it anyway, but right. nine times out of ten. It, I mean, I've seen fish freaking dart at something 15 feet away. Right. <laughs> so, well, and uh, I guess i got to elaborate, too. If we're talking jigs, we're talking the whole gamut of jigs. I will run, like, if we're talking a traditional jig, a skirted football or archie jig, three-eighths to half-bounce with a craw trailer, 
I like straight 15 pound fluoro. I have done, um, I have another rod that's got, I think, 30 pound braid that I've tied a uh, long leader of 15 pound fluoro on, and that feels good. A little weird for me to get used to, but I like it. Um, if I'm fishing more finessey stuff, I go braid to fluoro because I will throw on spinning stuff every time. I have specifically had a, or I specifically bought a rod that was built um, for me from Wicked Custom Rods. It's six foot nine, medium heavy fast. So, but it's a spinning rod. It's a little short, but it's stout. It's rated up to three quarter ounce. It, it, it's a big boy rod. But you throw 10 pound braid on that with a 10 pound liter of fluoro, you can bomb anything, even something super light and absolute mile. Yeah, throwing a quarter ounce jig on that thing, you're bombing it. Yep. Friggin' 100 feet. <laughs> but, and it's great on like when you need, you know, the, to your point about long casting days. Like how many times have we been up for smallmouth? On casting. crystal clear days, and you have to make like a hundred and fifty foot cast. Like you have to bomb these things, and you got to hit a boulder that you're looking at a hundred and fifty feet away. Right, and that's <laughs> but if you were doing that with straight fluoro, forget it. A lot of those times you're not gonna feel that bite. But with the braid and you know with spinning rod, you can get it out there and like and heave the thing. And don't worry about backlashing or anything. That's why, like I I feel it's absolutely critical you have at least one, like two really good spinning setups. Like ultra finesse and something stout for conditions like that where you really need to send it. Donk Swampy. Swamp Donkey. <laughs> Wait. Donk Swampy. Swamp Wait. Donks. <laughs> Best name in the whole chat. <laughs> um, Dave, what type of jig skirt material do you use in cold water? Living rubber silicone. Um, I honestly don't give that that much thought because. Black it, and blue. Yeah, black and blue. There, so there's there's like just regular rubber, there's silicone, there's living rubber, which I can't remember the difference. Um, and then there's it makes like a just difference, hair. but it makes it, it doesn't make it. it so it, it, it does to a point. Like it does. You're talking forty degrees and colder is where that kind of really starts to matter. Yeah. In which case you want hair. Other than that, like the thinner. I, the and I could be wrong. I'm sure there are guys that, like, get, there's windows and, you know, opportunities here and there throughout the year where, like, that absolutely makes a difference. But for, like, us normal people that aren't trying to make a living out of this, don't overthink it. Just a regular skirted jig with whatever's on there is going to work just fine, man. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're talking sub-40 degree water, and that's when you want to start getting more hair because that that just works better. It, it almost has a natural breathing action to it when it's just sitting there, which is what you want. Whereas... You know, a rubber skirt just kind of flares out and sits there and does nothing. Uh, but you kind of lose that that bulk look to it that you really want out of a jig. You know, that's kind of what makes a jig a jig you know, so good. How would you fish Winnie tomorrow? You know my answer. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a question for Dennis. If you were going tomorrow to Winnie, what would you? How would you be fishing it? If I was going tomorrow, uh, it would probably be all hair jigs and blade baits. As I'd probably throw a jerk bait down deep. I mean, not a jerk bait, uh, a drop shot down deep, and like I'd probably go to like 50, 60 feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, you may get. I mean, I just haven't had crazy. I've caught some fish on, that, on a drop shot. Shallow. Like I've caught fish on a drop shot when it's really cold, but I haven't had like crazy. Same. I do better with hard bait, hard baits or metal. Yep. When uh, when the water's super cold, I w I would spend most of my time hey, fishing. It did just ice out a couple weeks ago. Right. Oh yeah, up there it iced yeah. out. Like I think it was last thursday or something right no, so Jesus, this is gonna be freezing yeah, yeah. So, so you're talking low very low 40s so i, I wouldn't do much other Probably than a, a hair jig and a blade bait yep and fishing it I absurdly hate, slow like 30 second baits, pauses I heard maybe longer they work really well there yeah long long pauses probably 40 40 feet 50 feet 45 something like that Yep. Deep. If it's really, really sunny. <laughs> I fish for salmon. I fish for salmon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, You'll probably catch one, a salmon when you do it. If you get one, hit me up on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> if you get a really sunny day, I, I would... It's probably worth looking up a little shallower, but I, I, I would imagine that the bulk of the fish are probably still I would go right up into like feet. three feet and go look around. Just see. Yeah. Right. I've had those days where they've been up that shallow. Yeah, you never know. Uh, best jig for coming through heavy grass and weeds. Swim jig. Yeah, swim jig, and it's the Beast Coast one, which all of a sudden the name of it is evading me, so give me one second, I'll look it up, but it basically has like a double brush guard. It's a huge thing. It is a double brush. Well, it's double wide. I, I done told you. <laughs> Isn't it double wide? It's double wide. I mean, essentially, they double down I told on you. it. told <laughs> you. I know my jigs. 
not the hustler. Oh, dude, he might sideways on there. Well, I mean, there's so he's got the gorilla gorilla swim jig, which is good anyway. That's got a pretty stout brush guard on it in general. Um, the battle flip jig, that's the one. That one's got the uh, double wide weed guard. So it, it's, it's literally two brush guards side by side. It is strength and bleeding. Oh my god. <laughs> That was specifically designed to go through like the absolute heaviest, thickest crap you can get into. Um, it's 9.30. What else can we possibly talk about for... Well, I'll start rolling into like kind of the, the next phase, but we, we won't cover the whole gambit of the whole season for these baits. Because I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, because we can just keep coming back to this. That's the whole point of the stream. We can keep it current to existing conditions and what we're looking at for like, you know, two, three weeks out. But I don't want to go too, too far beyond that. Um, but this is New England. For all we know, starting next week, we could be in 90 degree temperatures for the rest of the summer. Uh, and before you know it, we'll have a spawn. So I do want to touch lightly like upon year. the next, yeah, exactly. Like oh, overnight, we went from like raw, cold crap weather to it's hotter than hell out. And oh, how the spawns here. Oh, great. <laughs> Catching rock bass every day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. So we did a pretty good job of covering everything up to pre-spawn for both jigs and jerk baits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess for like if we're talking the the last narrow window, like the last five degrees leading up to the spawn, what do you like to do for your jerk baits, or is that the point where you start thinking more crankbaits and jerk baits? Up more crankbaits. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, like if you're talking fifty-five to sixty, I would say. Uh, I will still have a jerk bait tied on, and I'll still use it. Obviously, it's a shallow jerk bait, and you're fishing it very, very, very erratically. You're not, you're not really letting it pause much at all, just for, just for a second or so in between jerks. But that's actually a time where I would go more with either a, a soft jerk bait like a fluke, yeah. or, or I would go with uh, some sort of shallow crankbait and something like that, where you can just burn down the bank and, and cover a bunch of water. Yep. Yeah, I start using square bills at that point. Yeah. Just cracking off as many rocks as I possibly can, deflecting off everything. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, you can do that with a jerk bait too. Yeah. But I don't want to destroy a jerk bait. Right. You're, you're, right. You're going to destroy an expensive jerk bait. And if you're talking about that's a time of year where the fish are shallow and it's basically you can get them anywhere you go shallow where there's spawning area near there. Whereas mm -hmm. now you're looking for like a school of fish. So if you're just trying to cover water, you can cover water faster with a crankbait than you can with a jerkbait, so it's more efficient. Right. So, Zona actually just did an episode recently talking about deeper diving jerkbaits mm -hmm. running them shallow and cracking them. Like, literally cracking them up against rocks and stuff. I mean, For, like, a, when you get those weird conditions where they're shallow and they're, they're kind of reacting to things, like what I was talking about earlier with the, uh, when they are hitting Ned Rig and then we could see them chasing jerkbaits back. Mm -hmm. They weren't committing. It's just a bigger profile. So fishing, crankbait, like... Really, at that point. Yeah, so it's I was fishing, like, aggressive... 10 jerks back and then like a one second pause and, and that was enough and I think that's if I remember correctly that's what Zona was talking about like it was a weird time where they were up and they were chasing moving baits but they weren't committing to it but if you get a jerk bait down there something you could you know you didn't really care about control. was sacrificial right. and literally smash it down to the rocks really fast and they'd follow it along but you had to be able to pause it and, and it could not float back up and they'd sit on it for a second and then they'd eat it hmm. food yeah. for thought food for yep. thought so, <laughs> crack. <laughs> yeah, dude, I've cracked one, one ten. You know, on the, at least the plus side, the one ten plus one and plus two, they're all the same price. So, I'm not doing that. They're all really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find some cheaper deep diving jerk baits because I do want to try that. Um, and I can think of like yeah. New Hampshire Brownie Factory, like well, when the they're lucky, up on those flats. Yeah, the lucky stuff. Honestly, like, a Rapalda would be fine. Like, if you're yeah. talking about, like, if you're working it pretty aggressively and you just need that one, two-second pause mm -hmm. for them to eat it, too. right, you know, like, you're just, who cares? Those are, like, five bucks a piece. Just rip right through them. Yeah. Um, and then in that case, you could buy, like, two or three of, like, five different colors and you're still only at the price of one friggin' one ten. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So expensive. Um, they work. Is there anything else either one of you specifically wanted to talk about in regard, or even questions regarding jerk baits or jigs that we haven't really covered? I know it's kind of early, but for the most part, we, we've covered the, the 
most important portion of the season, right? Like everything that's going on now, even backing up a little bit for people that are way north, northern New England, where like it's either just ice out or you still have ice. You know, you guys are prepped. Just slow down. For right after that. But, you know, super slow. again, is there anything we didn't cover that you were hoping that we would talk about? Any questions you guys wanted to ask? And that goes with the chat, too. Like, this, now is the time that we can kind of dive deeper into any specifics that anybody wants to go over. Mm, I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah, we went pretty... We did a lot. We did. A ton. Hey, Derek. Derek. An ultra deep cutter. Yes. That would, be, that would those, be cool. Those cutters do have really good action. I love those cutters. I, dude, the shape of the... Yep. I had one out. Brain right? fart. <laughs> the bill? Yes, the bill. is like a, It's almost like a coffin kind of shape. It just gives it a crazy action. And what? they're super light. Too. Oh my god, it came out without getting stuck. Nice. Yeah, the same one. Dennis. I've yeah, got a perch. I've got a gold one. I've got a bluegill that. one. The shape of that gill. <laughs> gill. Bill. Sir Altitude. Uh, I'm working from home now. That's why I can go after work. Normally, that wouldn't be possible. That's a that's a COVID side effect. He also doesn't have kids, so he's free to do as he pleases. I also don't have kids. <laughs> oh, my kids are still awake. Do you hear that? No. <laughs> this is your fault. <laughs> I had it pretty good last spring when my wife was... Good night, Gordy. Too. Have a good night, Gordy. Thank you, buddy. I'll be seeing you soon. Dunk, so I'll be whatever... Whatever, whatever should we be targeting this his time? Dog Swamp, are you high? Oh, with a jerk bait. Ah, uh, literally anything. <laughs> Lucky fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't understand that question. Me and Dog Swamp should hang out. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Area. area. Oh, what area should we be targeting this time of year with a jerk bait? I'd be. A I know right now, I probably, I'd go anywhere from, like, five to nine feet. Maybe maybe even a little deeper. Yeah, I think it, it depends. It's all water temp, right? And it depends yeah. on the lake you're fishing. I yep. mean, some lakes, the lake that I was at this week where I caught the five-pound smallmouth, the deepest that that lake gets is, like, ten feet. Now you water a 16-foot hole. Okay, I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know about that one. But... <laughs> the majority of the lake is just 10 feet. But uh, I caught that smallmouth in 47 degree water in about 5 feet of water, 6 feet of water. So they, they'll, it, I think it depends on the lake you're fishing. If you're fishing Winnipesaukee where it gets down into the hundreds of feet, then, you know, that, that area could be much deeper than a little pond like I was fishing. But uh, it'll work anywhere. I mean, it'll work. It, it'll, it'll work wherever the, wherever the, the cover is in your lake. For me, um, I've had my best luck working like high probability transitional areas and around bait. If I'm not marking bait, I'm not even bothering. I gotta get in those like good steep banks areas. Um, trying to find transitional areas this time of the year, you know, sometimes they, they move up towards it like a little early or they're just outside of it. Um, you know, anywhere adjacent to spawn flats, like. That's the areas I like to look. But again, I'm specifically having my best luck when I'm finding bait in the area. Mm -hmm. And the other thing to keep in mind too is that perch spawn in the spring. So right about when water, I think they spawn right when the water's about 50. So okay. it's just about that point. Yeah. Um, so bass like perch and they're starting to kind of stack up and do their thing. So if you can figure out where the perch like to be too, you've got a pretty good, and not to say the bass only feed on the perch, but it, it kind of helps hone areas in. You know, I like working steep drops right in front of super shallow areas, especially as the water gets closer to 50, where those bass are like, yep, this feels great. I want to get right up inside that super shallow water. If they're not <laughs> up in there, then they're just right on the other side. The perch pond is very much on. Yeah, exactly. So... Carl, just ordered my first rod from Wicked Custom Rods. Nice! Seven foot medium light fast finesse. That's gonna make one sexy rod. You're gonna be very yep. happy with that. Good drop shot. Right? Yep. Derek, we don't think about using live bait. That's what we think about using live bait. <laughs> 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 Unless we're ice fishing. Unless we're ice fishing. You know what I or salt. About? What? Nate. 
gave me all those to give away. Oh, he already gave them you? Yeah. Oh, I figured I can, because you didn't say anything that I, we didn't have them yet. I got out of work and came straight here. Oh. Uh, we're going to have a much better stream for you guys next week. You guys I might all want to... We got to figure out how we're going to do that. We're going to have to post it early in the week to make sure people can, like... For people that are kind of on the fence with plans and stuff, they can make plans. We have a bunch of stuff to give away. Mm. You heard it here already first. Bunch of stuff and some good stuff to give away next some week. Some good stuff. A good buddy of mine is going... Can't give too much away. <laughs> can I? No. Well... As far as what? We're giving away? Yeah. Mm, what he gave let's me? Let's keep it a surprise. Okay. We can keep it a surprise. We need it's to give them something it's to come good. back for. <laughs> he's, he's changed his plans on how he's going to be fishing. So, we got some things to give away. He gave me a few things. He's right. So. What? Oh, you sabotaged it because you knew I was going to be on it this week. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I was kind of thinking this was gonna be about an hour and a half show. It's been an hour. It, we've talked an hour and a half. Like from the moment we actually started going, was eight ten. It's nine forty. Um, we've covered everything again. Like, I don't want to go too far into the season because I want to be able to keep circling back on all these topics and and keep it current to the season. Um, it's not just New England too. Like, I know that we are based in New England, but it's called Northern Bass Talk. The whole northern half of the freaking country all does the same things as we do. The water temps are the same. The forge is all the same. It's all about, like, the kind of regions you're in and, like, where the fish are. So there's, like, a ton of stuff to catch. This is good. You want me to donate? Yes, thank you, Daniel. That's something I, I didn't bring up. You know, you guys that are watching, if, <laughs> leaving a like on the stream, especially sharing it, hugely helpful. Donations are also very helpful. We, <laughs> I, uh, you guys should do, I should should put on there like what the next goal is for us to buy for the stream so that people kind of understand like what it is we're working towards well it's a lot <laughs> it is a lot but we made really good ground like again we're looking for um a new digital camera like this webcam is okay but if we get a new digital camera we can do 4k resolution and it's gonna look real nice um, and we can take it for b-roll and everything else on the boat we exactly can... all the pictures on the boat get 10 times better it's instead... just gonna be better right even though our phone's actually still pretty good yeah, but our phones are probably gonna be better than the camera. Nah, this camera's gonna be great i know <laughs> you know so it'd be nice to have that and then plus side two is like this this camera i'm very limited like with where i can set it up um because it's only a 1080p and it's, it's a webcam so you can only do so much with it but if i have like an actual digital camera it gives me a little more um flexibility in how I set up the room and I can get a little like I don't have to drag my freaking desk forward five feet <laughs> I, I will do a tour of the room one night so you guys can really see like all the crap I have to like kind of tear apart to get going here <laughs> 4k live well real oh. that can be done <laughs> good it will be done um yeah I guess, so you know with what with your help that could be done <laughs> it could we're almost halfway there <laughs> uh so at this point yeah any last questions from the stream and we'll, we'll start to kind of wrap this up this would be a relatively early one I mean it's still 945 so it's not like it's crazy early or crazy late um way. yeah I did too all three hours that I worked today <laughs> mm. tough week ahead I, though. I, <laughs> I could have been in and out of my job in 30 minutes today was like support, I, I told him, was I was like, from viewers like you. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. Mike's good. Dude. <laughs> Why didn't he come fishing with us when we were down there? Because we he was stuck there. in Canada. He's not allowed to cross the border. Oh yeah, we we came to your country though. <laughs> By accident. Whoops. <laughs> I misread my map. <laughs> yeah, I zoomed out. I was like, what's that red line? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're gonna go. <laughs> oh shit. Pick a jig color other than black and blue. Green pumpkin? Yep. Yep. Green pumpkin. Uh, a, well, a green and brown. Green or brown. Green and... I... Green and brown or black and brown. This one... No, not that one. I, this... I mean, that's just a straight green pumpkin I've been throwing from, uh, Beast Coast. Like, it's a green pumpkin with black stripes. Yeah, those are good. Too. Intermixed. But prior to this, I've been throwing a green and brown. It's that same green pumpkin with... I mean, that's black and brown, but that brown mixed in, too. Like, that has always been good, because that's what a lot of our uh, crawfish look he like down, It's like Carlo, that greenish... Carlo's on the Cape, right? I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I think that's what he said last week. Yeah. Um, or something perchy, perch or bluegill. Bluegill actually I tend to do better with than perch color. Yeah, a little Jake's bit of blue, color. a little bit of gill in there. Yeah, and a little bit of orange <laughs> underneath. <laughs> Shut up. This is uh like that's good. That's the swim jig from uh, Beast Coast where it's got like almost like a tannish yellow in there, and it's got a little bit of orange on the head. Like you, you kind of can't go wrong with any of those. Thank you, Joy. Greatly appreciate it, buddy. Um, His name's Kyle. I remember. He remembered. He remembered. I didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Kyle. Hey, Kyle. 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 Hey, Kyle. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <It's> his friend. <laughs> um. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we'll we'll keep it open for like five more minutes tops for any last minute questions, and then we'll we'll jump off here and call it a night. Because two thirty in the morning comes very early for me, but I'm not gonna complain. Cause I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Yeah, probably not catch more than a couple of fish. You're gonna catch but six. There's a good chance it's gonna be a big fish, and that makes me happy. And even if it isn't, I don't care. Cause I'm gonna go up in the mountains in Vermont, and that alone makes me happy. I just love being in the mountains. That sets my soul right. Yeah, it's nice up there. You know what's fun? You know what's really fun? You know what's fun, boys? Next week, we're oh. one month away from the Champlain. <laughs> What, we're five weeks? Five weeks away? Five weeks? Just about. Has the thought crept into your mind that you might never catch another bass? No. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I think about that whenever I have a bad trip. I don't. <laughs> I just think that... I did, You know what co comes into my mind when I have a couple of really bad trips? Then I'm going to come on to these streams one night and I'm going to be like, Dude, why are we watching you? You suck. <laughs> <laughs> Who said this? I'm a sham. He I'm a fraud. It. <laughs> it's true. Ben and I go into the cave. Do some yeah. bass fishing, yeah. and that, yeah. at that lake, at that lake that I went to. Oh yeah, where uh, you went back to back? Yep. Yep. Who makes this? That's, That's Berkeley Cutter. Uh, what a cheap one! Like seven bucks. The old cheap. Actually, they might be more than that. Yeah, yeah, it's true, Mike. That's light work. That's a new job, John. Hey, see, I started my job the other day too. Thanks. That's right. <laughs> you didn't talk about it. <laughs> I know. You weren't miserable at yours like I was. Um, I actually, it's in New Hampshire, and the plus side too is that it's literally the same commute. Like, where I'm currently driving to in Mass, if I go straight highway, it's 46 miles, and it takes anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. Um, if I go back roads, it's about 35 miles. <laughs> it's literally the same going where I'm going to now. <laughs> um, Whatever. <laughs> just going straight north. Into, but, plus side, it's a way nicer ride, there's way less people, because I'm going in the opposite direction of all the traffic. So I will have easy breeze going in and coming home. It's not going to change my drive time whatsoever. And I'm less than 10 minutes from a handful of insanely good fisheries. From when I, so when I, I mean, as soon as I start, basically, I'm going to be dragging my boat with me to work every Friday. I'm going fishing after work. <laughs> this is the time of year my friends get really pissed because I still game. And usually Friday night to like game night with the boys. Not anymore. <laughs> Yeah, once summer, once it starts to get warm and that night light is on. Yeah. Sorry, SVM. <laughs> I'm gonna be late a lot. <laughs> um, oh, Carl. You had to pick one type of sunline floral for both moving baits and bottom baits. Which one? Well, just... I can't answer for sunline. I have... I know everybody once. that uses that FC Sniper, and I had the worst experience I've ever had with line when I tried it. I don't know if I just got a bad spool or what, but you fished that tournament with me at Franklin Pierce. Remember how many fish I broke off that day? Aw. Dude, it was bad. And I switched up my knots and everything, and it sucked. It could have been pike, too. It could have been. They aren't like that. Yeah, but yeah. they weren't, like, clean breaks. There's a couple that, like, it was an audible snap. Yeah. Well, Weird. me and Kyle had the same thing happen to us. We were using... It also could be that you got a spool that was yeah, like I think it was spool. super yeah, it was, old. Right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We were fishing, and I kept breaking off everything. And I don't really ever break off anything. No. Yeah, I forget. What, I remember that, but I can't remember what you were throwing. I forget. But Kyle was. Kyle had. He went. I had to go to Walmart to get a line, so I went there, got it. Kyle went like the day before, two days before, had got the same stuff. We were breaking off left and right, both Ugh. of us. Hmm. Same, same, must have been the same, Walmart same as well, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Six-year-old. <laughs> yeah. I, I use shooter and, and sniper for most of the things that I do. I haven't had any issues with them. Now I will, because I said that. 
I have always, uh, not always, uh, six or seven years ago, I switched to Seaguard. And I went Red mm. Label. And dude, that still is phenomenal line. I still use it for all my leader line. But That's what I use for everything. For my heavy leader line. Um, like 12 pound and up. Otherwise, I use a Brazix if I'm going straight fluoro. Um, and for my 10 and 12 pound leaders, I use a Brazix. And I use Tatsu for my 8 pound leaders. That stuff's cool. Dude, that stuff's so nice. I like that. So nice. It's $45 for a 200 yard spool. Oof. It's not cheap. Oof. But if I'm, that's my lightest line I use for my all my finesse stuff, and I have not had, I've had zero issues with it. It ties beautifully. It feels good. Like it's just a really, really nice leader line. And because I'm using it for leader line, I can make it stretch for a while. Um, it's literally for only one rod, my drop shot rod. So it, yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's one of my go-to. Like if I like jigs and drop shot are my two absolute go-to techniques. Those are the two things I'm going to like spend good money on for something that just performs mint. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin, you're absolutely right, dude. Smash Patty Burgers. Wait, who said it before? Mm -hmm. How far is it from Smash Burgers? So that was uh, it's about an hour and a half. Uh, I'm going to try and get up there this week, I think, while I'm off from work. I was thinking about that. It'd be the perfect opportunity to go up and see my buddy DJ. Because I don't know. Otherwise, he's he's closed on Sundays, so I can never see him when I'm up there. Oh, thanks, Mike. Sir, also told me to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Seaguard does rule. Six and a half hours, come on. <laughs> what do you use for braid? Braid? Uh, Daiwa J braid. That eight strand stuff. Dude, that stuff is so nice. We were nice. just talking about it. Yeah, yep. Okay. It, dude, it's oh, good and it's cheap. Man. It's 832. It's that so I tried, green stuff right there. Yeah, uh, that, like nuclear green. Okay. Mm. Um, I tried the 832 and this is a little, a little bit more supple hmm. and seems to last longer. Like it doesn't look like it's dried out or sun yeah, bleached out as much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's not that expensive. What is it? Daiwa. Daiwa J Bridge. J Bridge. Yep. Yeah, it's real good. Justin, you got any time off this week? I'll come fish with you. I can't really go far because I still have to come back by 3.30 at absolute latest. I have to be back in town for my wife to go to work in the evenings. So I can only fish local all next week. But if you're around you want to take a day off, go hammer the river, I'll come up. And I'll, I'll, Lunch is even on me. I'll go buy a smash patty for the two of us. Oh, Fun. you bring me one home. We can go over there Monday. Oh, he's closed on Mondays. He's DJ? closed on Sundays and Mondays. We go fishing with DJ on Monday. Ooh, we go for largies. I'll talk to DJ. Like, what are you doing Sunday, buddy? Or Monday. That'd be cool. Sunday, we should go to Candlewood. Sunday, I need to put a bearing in my boat trailer. You can start it Saturday after work, and you can finish it Monday after we get back from fishing. What are you talking about? It's going to take you 20 minutes. Yeah, it's not going to Then you can do it Saturday after work. <laughs> I'm fishing after work on Saturday. Then you can do it tomorrow after work. Not with one it's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. I'll drag it. <laughs> I don't care. Fin do it tomorrow. Get it done. We're going to Candlewood Sunday. There. You're welcome. Um, Candlewood. I get you. <laughs> exactly. It's their altitude. Every line I like recommended. Every line I like, I recommend to Sean, and then he hates it. Yeah, it's because you recommend crap line, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep, but I'll be out tomorrow night and Saturday all day. Good, Justin, awesome. Hi, Kristen. Hey, Kristen's coming fishing with me. Kristen, you and I are probably going to fish every day next week. <laughs> it's going to be great. I hate you guys. Sucks to be you, nerd. We will send you a picture of the two of us, like, cheek to will. cheek hugging while we're both holding giant fish. She's married. Hey. So are you. <laughs> Friendly! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I, don't All right. know, I think that's it. It's already 9.50, 9.53. We've gone well past. Um, all right. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. No more parting thoughts. You guys had your chance. It's I gave you an extra five minutes. So thank you all for tuning in. Greatly appreciate it. Especially the people that donated tonight. Thank you so friggin' much. You're the winners. You're <laughs> the real winners. Everyone else when you is. say it like that, it doesn't sound sincere. <laughs> 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 it was a great night. Like, this is... Still going way above expectations. Um, we're only 11 episodes in, and it's great. So thank you all. Greatly appreciate it. Um, hit us up anywhere. Facebook, Instagram. I'm, I'm on Twitter, though nobody else is because Twitter sucks. Um, if you have any suggestions for upcoming shows that you want us to cover, hit us up. We actually have another one uh, that I want to do with Chris Martin from Aluminum Fishing Series. Where we're going to talk, like, aluminum versus fiberglass. But I also want to bring in some other people too, so we can also talk John boats and kayaks, 
And then, like, equipment on boats. That's another topic that I really want to get into. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nobody should ever buy Sunline, so him and I have a lifetime supply. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Brian. And thank you, Chris. Turn it on. Just a big fish tomorrow? Let's have... Ooh, maybe. Nah, just kidding. Every time I bet, I lose. Like, I just... <laughs> I don't go. I've never been to a casino, and I'll never go. I'm the I. Casinos are fun. When you I think go the there for the casino. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> thank you, Mike. <laughs> um, I think the most I've ever won on a scratch ticket was nine dollars, and I used to play them a lot, like in college. I only ever played Money Puzzle, because that way at least I felt like if I lost, like it was kind of worth it. Cause I put a lot of time in on it. That's worse. I don't know. That it is felt like it, that is, that's so much worse. I, I, so you're wasting your time, then you lose. Not only like, did you well, lose, was but you spent a bunch of time losing. But it was like a fun amount of time. It's, like, it's a puzzle. It was like, He's an engineer. I, can I get that E? <laughs> Fuck you. Not anymore. Now I'm in sales. Good job. <laughs> How the hell do we not? It, it's a it, it, money puzzle. I don't know. You won either three, I think six, nine, 25, 50, like, and, and then eventually I think the by the time then the top prize was ten thousand, but I think it's up to thirty thousand. Thinking, thinking is your prize, huh? Thinking is your prize. Thinking is my prize. Thinking is not <laughs> anything in my vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Shiny went to the wrong stores in college. Yeah, dude, trust me. I this is why I don't bet, man. I don't. <laughs> just, it doesn't work for me. I'm gonna kill the stream, Andrew, as usual. All right, sign it off. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's all the. We will see you next week. Same time. Same place.